The bar has been set high in Kamloops this season for their Blazers. After a division title in 2012 and nearly a trip to the conference finals, round two is only halfway to where the Blazers expect this year's road to take them. An explosive offense returns and a nearly perfect start to the season has not let the hype down. Tonight, the challenge comes from the Emerald City, where the Seattle Thunderbirds are still trying to find their stride in the tough U.S. division. But a win in Kamloops could help the T-Birds take flight. It's a Western Conference showdown. Thunderbirds and Blazers, next on Shaw. Blazers offense needed any more of a jolt. There's Brendan Ranford returning to Kamloops after a stint with the Hamilton Bulldogs at their training camp. 92 points a season ago to lead the way for the Blazers. They kick off a four-game homestand against Jesse Forsberg and the Seattle Thunderbirds. Forsberg, an off-season acquisition from the Prince George Cougars, a goal and a plus one through four games for Seattle. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Interior Saving Center in Kamloops and the WHL on Shaw and WHL Central brought to you by Sierra Sill. I'm Andy Neal. Just a reminder, this game is in HD on Channel 303. Well, this is the first of four meetings this season between the Blazers and the Thunderbirds. Kamloops, as you know, coming off breakthrough 2011-12 with 47 wins and a BC division title and they are clearly one of the favorites to represent the Western Conference when the WHL finals roll around next May. Many of the key parts to a top end offensive group that had the third most goals in the WHL last season are back for this year and as you saw Brendan Ranford is here as well after his time with the Hamilton Bulldogs he was released on Wednesday arrived in town on Thursday and the Blazers nearly perfect start to the season just a shootout loss to Victoria last Friday is their only blemish to the record so far, but they're coming off a win in Victoria on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Seattle Thunderbirds trying to get into the postseason for the first time since 2009. They started this year with a surprising win, 5-2 over the Portland Winterhawks. New starting goaltender Brandon Glover made 55 saves in that outing, and Seattle is 2-2 two two to start the year. They're coming off a win as well in overtime in Prince George on Saturday by a 2-1 count. Well, for more on tonight's action, let's go to Dan Russell and Bill Wilms, who have the call tonight. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Andy. And let's pick up on uh, Brendan Ranford, who was returned this week from the American Hockey League. I wonder, Bill, if he returns to the WHL with a, maybe a chip on his shoulder. The Flyers didn't sign him. Hamilton releases him, and he's a good hockey player. Well, the other side of all of those great draft stories that we're able to tell you about is Brendan Ranford. Like you said, originally drafted by Philadelphia in 2010. You know what he's done, folks, since that draft year, not getting signed? 137 games, 178 points. Are you telling me there's not a National Hockey League club willing to sign him? Come on. Give your head a shake, folks. The Blazers are thrilled to have him back. And if he leads his team in scoring this year, it'll be the third year in a row he's done so. And they've had so much depth uh, returning to their lineup. Camel's forward, is, uh, forward group is loaded. And for my money, Tim Bozon was one of the most exciting players Bill to watch last year. Well, how exciting was he? He was the Western Conference Rookie of the Year nominee. Montreal took him in the third round. What hands, what ability to get away from people. He'll pick pucks up around the slot area. 36 goals last year, not one hat trick, Dan. This year he's already got a hat trick in his first game. And how about Colin Smith? Took him two years to get drafted. To, but he's now a Colorado Avalanche uh, prospect. They revamped his skating. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten faster. You add J.C. LaPon to that line. You've got 90 goals. You've got 210 points from last year, and they're off to a good start. They're 1-2-3 in Blazers scoring this year. Yeah, and those three guys each scored 30 goals last year. How many teams returned 30 goal guys? Three of them. Alexander Delnoff of Seattle is one of their newcomers from the import draft bill, and he's obviously a guy they're going to be counting on. Yeah, and I laugh at him. How much did the Florida Panthers go off the board when they drafted this guy in the fourth round? Dan, they had to stop the draft. They, he wasn't even on their registry. They had to put him on as a draft eligible guy. Then Seattle takes him eighth overall in the CHL import draft. 
He missed the first two games in Prince George because of visa problems. He's playing tonight. It's that young man's first game in Canada in the Western Hockey League, and I agree, they look to him for scoring. Jesse Forsberg was added to the back. He comes from Prince George. He will bring leadership. He was one of the Cougars' captains last year. You know, I wondered if the Forsbergs in Prince George, Alex and Jesse, would ever be separated. They might, you know, you thought they'd not be split, but Colin Jacobs goes to Prince George for Jesse. You talk about leadership, you're right. Experienced blue liner, you're right. He's a captain of the Cougars, comes here. He's a 19-year-old Dan that comes to Seattle as a defenseman. The only player on defense for that Seattle team with more than two years of WHL experience. So Seattle is here tonight. They will have their hands full against this Kamloops team, Andy, and they have lost 14 straight, dating back to November of 2009 versus the Blazers. Back to you. Yeah, it has been a real one-sided affair between these two teams. Kamloops has swept the season series over the last two years, so it's a fresh start. This is the first of two this month that these two teams will square off against each other. They will meet October 28th in Seattle. One of nine tonight in the WHL, including the top team in the WHL last year's worst team, the Prince Albert Raiders. They've got nine points going into tonight. They're in action in Calgary. Blazers in Seattle, next on Shaw. Oh, the Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. As we welcome you back to Camelops getting ready for the Blazers and Seattle. Their first meeting of the year. Both teams played last weekend on the road. Both teams won on the road last weekend. And before we get going, let's go down to our own Stu Walters. Thank you very much, Dan, here with Blazers forward Colin Smith. Colin, you're coming off a very productive season on the line with J.C. LaPon and Tim Bozon. Seems like you're picking up where you guys left off, 16 points in four games. What makes your line tick? Uh, I think just our work ethic. Um, you know, we're going to get it in their zone and uh, stick to our strengths. And I think that when we're all working hard and, and moving our feet, I think that's when our, uh, where we're most successful. What do you know about this Thunderbird squad and what do you expect tonight? Uh, it's still early, so, you know, not a whole lot. We know they're going to come. and. And we're, pre we're prepared for that. We want to have a good first five. Good luck tonight, Colin. Thanks a lot. Dan and Bill. All right, Edmonton-born Colin Smith. Let's now meet the starting goalies for tonight's game for Jack Lynx. Jack Lynx, feed your wild side. There's Brandon Glover, who played for Moose Jaw. He played for Calgary. He found a home as a 20-year-old with the Seattle Thunderbirds. There's his numbers, and what a year Cole Sheveldave had last year, his first in the WHL. He really springboarded Camels with great early goaltending, and it paved the way for a fantastic season for the Blazers. The referees tonight used to be linesmen, and there, there's a story in the WHL this year in terms of they are grooming a lot of new referees. Kevin Bennett and Matt Thurston are the referees. Riley Balson and Chris Hartley on the lines, and we are underway here in Kamloops, and the Blazers are wearing their special third uniform. That's them in the dark, and we have not seen this look from Kamloops on Shaw before. Nice looking Blazer uniform. Very dark blue as Ranford brings it in over the line. Rolls off his stick, and it goes to Jarek Smith, who plays it around this side. Honey couldn't get possession of the puck. Forsberg does have it. Jesse Forsberg just avoids the check. As he plays it off the wing, there is a turnover, and a man down low is to Pat, but they couldn't get him the puck. There's Ranford with it. Ranford plays it out to the line, but nobody's there because the Blazers were making a change. Here's Gaudet now. Brady Gaudet, now in his third year. High and wide over top the Seattle net, it goes. Battle on the far side. Colin Smith, who Stu just spoke with, trying to come off the boards against Jarrett Smith. No relation, the puck right there in the crease. Who's going to come up with it? Oh, the good save by Glover. He couldn't find it, but he had his leg down low, and that allowed him to make the pad save. Just sat there and sat there, and some Blazer got their stick on it. LaPon now tests Glover, and then he makes a save on a rebound, and he's able to hold it out. So three early shots on goal by Kamloops <laughs> against Glover. Yeah, how, you know, how about that line of LaPon? Smith and Bozon. Watch him get around the net. There's all three of them. This is what makes them so effective. There's Glover making a terrific save, and the line doesn't quit. They come right back, and the three of them all in that zone right there. They're tenacious. They are really wanting that puck badly. They do such a job, good job of getting it to the net, and Glover has to be sharp right away. That first shot actually went off Brendan Rouse's leg in front, hit the Seattle player, and that's how Glover got his pad on. He had to be sharp. Theodore now gets it for Seattle. Now it's brought up through the neutral zone. And in 
over the blue line and is Rouse with it. Rouse trying to get it back towards the blue line area. Turnaround shot by Delnov. That goes wide of the net. And here's Kamloops with possession. Herbis. Herbis. Now Yuli goes off his stick. Deep in their own zone. That's Jordan Thompson moving around the boards. Theodore now in possession as he'll play across ice. And with two minutes gone in the period, it's tipped in by Seattle. Now it goes behind the net for Kamloops up the board. Soto comes out. Soto tries to get around Sheen. He could not, but he follows it up nicely. And Soto continues to battle, but outnumbered by all those white-shirted Thunderbirds. And back comes Green. Green in over the line to Sheen in front of the net, and it just misses Sanvito as he went towards the net. Connor Sanvito just couldn't get a stick on it. Out towards the line, long shot. And I don't know if that hit Shovel Day, but Wolf shot from the blue line, ended up going off the glass. Wolf decides not to pinch. Hamels backhands it out, Wolf has it, he'll shoot it right back in again. Both teams making changes. Man, that was a real good pushback shift by the Seattle Thunderbirds. After that flurry around Brandon Anderson, they got that puck deep. They haven't spent much time in their zone since then. That's a nice job on the road by the T-Birds. Almost a turnover there. Gade puts it over top the net. Just goes up towards the top corner and missed. Now behind the goal, a centering pass doesn't get there. Sturzer now for Kamloops on his back end. Here's Gade. Nicely cross ice it goes and a long shot. Glover gets his stick on it. That one taken by Landon Cross. Cross way down deep now. Still holding it. Gade again with possession. Long shot. Purposely wide off the backboards and in front of the net. Sturzer just can't get his stick cleanly on it. Another good shift by Kamloops as it backhanded in. And both times the Kamloops Blazers were able to get that puck from behind the Seattle net back to the point. And I say that because that's too much time. Here's Ranford on the turnover. Ranford throws it in front. Willick can't get his stick on it. Lockhart now for Seattle. Up to Honey as Honey makes a move. Tries to go around Herbis. Honey to Lockhart. And his backhand goes wide of the net. Battle for the puck there. Kamloops seems to have the numbers, but instead it is Seattle has the puck. Lipsburg's sharp angle shot. That misses. And here comes Kamloops. Willick. Has to get away from him. And Honey goes back the other way. Honey, slap shot goes wide of the net. Missed by three feet. Goes back to Theodore. Great, great pace to this game. Wow, they're moving. Shane Theodore puts it off the boards. It goes down the ice, so it's icing on Seattle. Yeah, I love the way both teams have you know, pushed back, gotten pucks deep, gotten pucks in the other zone. Well, let's take a look at these two teams' record so far this season. You see what Andy Neal was talking about, the only blemish there on Kamloops Blazer record is that shootout loss. You see where they stand in their division, you know, as far as the Seattle Thunderbirds are concerned, they've missed the playoffs three years in a row. Chance to wrap around for Kamloops. J.C. LaPon is stopped by Glover. Here's Colin Smith now. Goes on LaPon as they work the cycle. Trying to chase over there is Forsberg. Look at them whip that puck around. Bell from the line. His shot hits the leg. Bozon gobbling it up, but he can't find his man back at the net. Intercepted by Lockhart. And Seattle gets the puck through the neutral zone. No score nearing the five-minute mark of the first period. Lafon organizing from inside his own blue line. Long home run hitting pass towards Bozon. That's a risk-reward. There was too much risk and no reward. It's icing. Guy Chiron showed that he meant business in his first preseason game. He started the Boson Smith Lapon line. Talked about the points. He dressed 11 players, 18 or older, plus Chevalde went the whole game in net. He's an old school coach, and he said, you know what? A veteran lineup is a must for the home fans, and he hasn't let his foot off the accelerator yet. And we'll uh, expand the story about that line that has three 20 year olds on it led by Ranford, but you don't see that in Western Hockey League very often. Three 20-year-olds on the same line. Puck goes down the ice once more, not far enough for icing. LeBron jumps on it, he and Green battling for it. Down off on the far side, can't get a stick on it. Here's Cross, long shot, high one, and Glover gloves it and holds on. 
Brandon Glover, Brandon Glover, 938 save percentage. Dan, you mentioned him coming from Moose Jaw to Calgary to Seattle. 40 games, 70 games last, last couple years with Calgary. Career 40 wins, 39 losses. A 20-year-old, a big goaltender. 6'5, 167. Not the, you know, not the heaviest in that regard, but he's really given this team some good solid goaltending. Kamloops wins the offensive zone faceoff. They try to puck towards the front of the net. Hickman intercepts, gets it out to center ice. Bambito will backhand the puck in. Double day back from behind his own net. The shots in the early going are 7-3 in favor of Kamloops. Cross plays it up the far wing. There's a nice breakout. They come in over the line. It's Mike Needham. His son, Matt. Mike is the skills coach. Mike Needham was a great Kamloops player, a very exciting player. His son Matt, now in his second year, wearing jersey number 14. We saw him when he came up. We did one of the Shaw games when he was a 15-year-old, so technically it's the second, but he did play parts of that season two years ago. Last year, his first full season, had 12 goals. He had a great last uh, probably six weeks to the season, Needham did. He really thinks he could be a point of game guy this year. He was very, very solid in the playoffs as well. Puck shot around the boards, but not out for Kamloops. As Seattle has some numbers down there in the corner, but when they come out and make something happen, number seven in there is Mitch Elliott. That's him still with the puck. Tries to throw it in front, intercepted. it. Dumped out towards the line, but Green keeps it in and puts it back of the net. Over on the far side, McCallum. Pull up, tries to get his stick on it. Allos, back end behind the net. Jordan Thompson for Cameron. Plays wow, it up what a nice play. Now it is controlled by the Blazers' Herbis. A bouncer in on Glover, and he holds on. What'd you like about that play? He just dumped it into that soft area, Dan. There was nobody around in that corner. Just did such a great job. You know, for a 16-year-old, and that's what he is. It's just a heads-up play to get that puck. I think we're going to show it to you here. He's got trouble in that corner. He's got a fortune. Look where he put that puck. Really soft along the board. There's nobody even in the area, and that Blazers are able to come out with it. Really a heads-up play by the 16-year-old defenseman. Especially when you're about to be hit hard on the end boards like that. 7.07 gone here in the first period as you look at Steve Konowalczuk, the second year head coach of the Seattle Thunderbirds. Tenacious work ethic in the National Hockey League. Tenacious desire to continue playing in the NHL. Dad, he got six doctor's opinions when diagnosed with heart problems. He wasn't going to take no for an answer. Retired at 33 years old, played in a 98 Stanley Cup Washington uh, capital team. Really a good man behind the bench. And a few stops, they played almost 800 National Hockey League games. Had a good chat with him before, and he loves his team here this year as Glover makes the save, and it's really like Glover. He probably liked him from opening night on. They went into Portland on opening night, and Glover made over 50 saves, just made another one there, and they surprised the Western Conference finalists from last year with an opening night victory, and that got their season off to a good start. Ramford now from back of the net. There's the Pap. The Pap trying to spin off a check. The 20-year-old line is out there now for Kamloops. Gaudet's shot well high, well wide. Lipsburg's trying to Great, chop it out, could not. There's a centering pass to Pap off the side of the net. Seattle in a little bit of pressure here. Theodore tries to get it out, and then he follows it up, and he'll skate out, and he'll chase it down. No icing on this play as Gaudet goes back. Theodore, with his good speed, retreats back. Heads to the bench on a line change. Here comes Kamloops Smith in over the line. Smith now on his back, and what a pass! And Bozon can't finish it off. Pretty pass there by Smith. Bozon just unable to score his fourth goal. He's got three already for Kamloops this season. Delnoff chasing after the puck for Seattle. Delnoff, number 24. Good job along the wall. He has two or three Blazers on him. And they're just going to battle for this puck. No whistle yet. And then finally scores three to Kamloops. Nine minutes now gone in this first period as Gaudet goes back to collect the puck. Saskatchewan born player. Gaudet gets it out to center. Forsberg. Also Saskatchewan born player. Hammers it right back in again. Smith. Heard a little footsteps. Ran into a check. And Seattle in the neutral zone. Can't complete the pass. Not much play in the neutral zone so far. 
Foes on, waiting for his mates to try to get onside. Flips it in, Glover holds on to it, then drops it for Wolf. Kevin Wolf from St. Paul, Minnesota. Up to Hickman. Hickman going wide. Hook check off his stick. Sandito trying to follow it up. Hickman's right there at the line, trying to get by Thompson. Sandito can't back in that pass through, and then there's Uli on the back check. Good play and a good pass. Uli gets the puck up for Needham. Needham rolls it into the Seattle zone. Glover out of his net, leaves it for Wolf. Or does he? Wolf has a little bit of trouble with it, but Seattle works out okay as Hickman comes out of his own zone. Up for Green. Green going wide. Green and Bell collide. Back of the net for Seattle. Justin Hickman trying to move the puck in front. He can't. Bell's got it. He plays it high along the glass. And it'll come out towards the neutral zone. Trying to follow it up there is Soto, but can't get his stick on it. Alos gets it, banks it off the boards. And Soto's got it back again. Soto will flip it in from the red line, and he'll head to the bench on a line change. Theodore back to collect. Collect the puck as we're now past the halfway mark of the first period. The shots are 10-3 in favor of Kamloops. Seattle's not really had a good scoring chance. I'd say Kamloops has had very few as well, maybe one or two. But the pace has been real good. Sturzer tries to move it in. Good checking on both sides as Absol well. Yeah, absolutely right, Dan. There's not a lot of time. There's not a ton of space. The gap controls so far good. Look at the gap control there. And that allowed that puck to be dumped in only because of good gap control. There's a safe play. Wow, where's that puck going? It's out. These are smart plays that these teams are making today. And then back to the camera zone it goes with Brady Gaudet. Being watched closely there by Holub. But Gaudet makes the play and the Blazers are out of their own zone. Sturzer follows it up and he'll backhand it deep into the Seattle end of the ice. Forsberg, a collision back of the goal. Kamloops player is a little bit slow to get up. That's Macklin, but he is up. Somebody's lost his stick. That is Macklin again, and he hits the bench. He'll be replaced, and Honey will try to chase the puck down into the neutral zone. Honey towards Shovel Dave. He turns that aside. Pretty routine save, but it is the fourth shot on goal for Seattle. Very few whistles here in the first period. Ranford chipping the puck forward. The path now to Willick. Ranford has Willick in the slot. Ranford holding, holding, back to the line. Here's a shot, and Glover makes the save as that shot was taken by Conley. There's a centering pass for Ranford, swept away, and Honey will start back. Honey, at the end of his shift, might just roll it in, and then he'll peel back into the bench on a line change. Full scale change for Seattle. Hamlet's completing one themselves. Swenson's got the puck on the turnover. He shoots it in, and Tyler Bell from Regina moves it around this side. LaPon up the boards. Here's Ranford. He's trying to get himself some room. He's tripped, and they'll call that. There'll be a first penalty, our first blemish on the score sheet. With 7.31 to go in the first period, there is no score, but there are some hits as you watch the WHL from Kamloops on Shaw. WHL Hockey is live on Shaw. Watch Wednesday, October 17th, when the Everett Silvertips look to take a bite out of the Eastern Division with a stop and swift current to take on the Broncos. WHL Hockey, only on Shaw. Here with Blazers head coach Guy Sharon. Guy, are you happy with your team's pace of play and possession so far? Yeah, it's been pretty good. There's a couple of times we needed to put, put the puck behind our defensemen. Don't want to cause too many turnovers against this team. What do you want to see on your power play here, other than a goal? Well, a lot of puck movement. They're number one penalty killing in the league, so we're going to have to get shots on net and get some traffic. All right, good luck, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Dan? They are number one, Bill. They've killed everyone off this year there except one there's the penalty that gives them the power play some say there aren't bad defensive players just lazy ones there's a good example Delnoff talked about him on our pregame show gonna sit in the box and his power play is gonna go to work however strange things we've seen Seattle Thunderbirds number one on the penalty kill Camus power play though is five for 20 already so they're just fine with the man advantage in the early going of the season we'll see them whip this puck around pretty good very confident team Lapon down low it goes to Smith Smith tries a hard pass in front goes on can't get a stick on it Ranford has it though in the corner Ranford to Lapon Lapon to front what a save no it goes in they do score Smith scores for Camus Glover thought he had it but it is one nothing on the power play goal 
for the Kamloops Blazers. Well, I think J.C. LaPont, or is it Smith that's going to get the goal? But it doesn't matter, Dad. You talk about whipping that puck around. Bozon in the corner. Ranford takes over. This is now controlled play in that corner to get that puck to that spot there. Boy, that's just using the triangle perfect. Corner to corner, behind the net, to the front of the net. And Colin Smith has to have that stick on the ice to redirect that puck perfectly the way he did. That's a power play goal for Blazers on the board. It's his third of the year for Colin Smith, who leads the team now with eight points in the early going. LaPon drawing the first assist, and Ranford gets yet another one for his all-time statistical. You know, he's 13th, Ranford, his all-time for Campbell's Blazers scoring, and they've had great, great scores in this building over the years. And in the older arena downtown, about a kilometer or so away from where we are watching tonight. So it's 1-0, it's a power play goal. It's an offensive zone, a penalty taken by Seattle, and drawn by Ranford. He draws the penalty, he draws the assist. And we'll see how Campbell plays with their lead. Puck comes out here to Forsberg. Forsberg over on the far side. It's going to be backhanded in by Holub. And back to get it is Josh Connolly. Connolly is from Prince George. He coughed up the puck. There's a centering pass. It's Chevalde blocked. Fans want another penalty as they're not going to get it because one of the Campbell squares was knocked down. Sturzer now goes in deep. Sturzer and Wolf battling for possession. Allos has it. Allos gets the puck up. Here's Elliott now. Elliott has it roll off his stick, but he goes deep to the corner, being checked there by Herbis. Centering pass, Allos stopped by Shevel Dave. Allos tries to throw it in front. Herbis blocks the pass. Allos pinned against the wall now. And it's worked free to Kamloops, but looks like they're gonna have a tough time getting it out, and they are. Here's Wolf on the line. Wolf shot, low one, it's a good idea. Shevel Dave got his pad on it. Wolf was looking for a deflection there. And tchaikovsky has got the puck. The former Calgary hitman sends it deep into the Seattle zone, heads to the bench of the line chain. We're now down to about five minutes remaining in the first period. And there's a turnover. And here's Jordan to Pap. To Pap holding it, shooting it, save rebound, score! No goal! They say he kicked it in. Willick doesn't argue very much. The rebound came right out to him, and it looks like he directs it in. They'll have a discussion, though. No goal on the ice. They may review it. Dad, I want you to watch the shot that the Pat makes here. Here's the turnover. Now, as he gets that puck at that point, he knows somebody's on his left. He looks. Now, he knows he's got to get a rebound. That's the only way that the Pat knows he's going to get that pass through, is it's not available. Here's the shot. There is the save, there is the rebound, comes right out to Willick. Now, the question is, is it kicked in or not? We'll find out. But nonetheless, I think that's the Pap at his best, getting the puck on the net in such a way that Glover's got to give that rebound straight out. Glover couldn't deflect it into the corner of the rink, and LaPont was there, or Willick was there to score it. Well, or not score it. Exactly. It ended up in the net. That's the important thing from that point, whether it'll count or not. The puck is actually placed on the faceoff dot right now outside the blue line. Oh, we get a better look. Well, I'll get the signal here. No, it's a goal. It's a goal. They're calling it a goal. That was a pretty quick review, and we'll watch it again. Maybe they say he didn't direct it, or maybe they'll say he got a stick on it or it went off his leg. It's a tough call, but uh, they do call it obviously a goal 2 nothing. He definitely didn't kick it. He may have directed it, and I'm not so sure that after that puck hit Willick's skate, it didn't kind of glance off his stick. But I, again, I'm so impressed with the path, knowing that he can't get the pass over, knowing that if he gets the shot on the net, that is the only way that Willick's going to have a chance at it, providing that Glover gives up a rebound. It's exactly what happened. I must say, though, that for a goal that was called no goal on the ice, that's a fast review. Especially for a play like that, Dylan. that looked like, did he get a stick on it or not? Do you think initially he kicked at it, Bill, or do you think it just glanced off his leg? I thought he was a kicking motion. No, I thought he, yeah, I thought he, I didn't think he gave his foot directly towards the net. 
I don't think it was a kicking motion at all, from what I could tell. Well, I'm sure we'll look at it again, and you can, again, judge at home. Usually when it's called no goal on the ice, they'll look at that a lot longer than they ended up doing. Maybe they had a good look at the saying that it went off uh, his body after it hit his skate as well. Here's Smith and Glover makes the pad save. Banked off the boards, it goes down the ice, finally back to chase the puck. They got so many weapons the Blazers have offensively. You know, Smith, he'll come late in the rush. They're always getting it to somebody who's got a pretty good shot at getting that puck at the net. Over on the far side, Delnoff collects it for Seattle. Swenson, he's hit as he puts the puck just inside the Camels line. Bell on the back check. Another hit, Hoff in the, and boy, we should talk about how big the Seattle players are. There's a penalty coming up here. I'm not sure who's getting this one. There are a couple of hits. They're trying to call a cross check. And it's Seattle again going to the box. They're down two, and they're shorthanded again. And this is what you were talking about, Dan. We want another look at that. Let's have a good look. There's the shot. There's the rebound. I, I'm not so sure that that doesn't hit. Will it stick after the skate? Now, have a look. There's the skate. I don't know about that. It doesn't hit the stick. It doesn't hit any other part of the body. His skates are going towards the net, but I'm not sure there was a uh, kicking action. And there's a penalty, as you see, really late hit. Not a smart move. Seth Swenson already in the box for the uh, Camelot Blazers have scored on a power play. So, wow, 328 left. It's important the Teamers kill us off. Also, down two already. Here's Smith in over the blue line. Drop pass, it goes to Ranford, Ranford to Herbis. Herbis gets it over to Lapon. back to Herbis, winding up, here's his shot, save, rebound in front. Smith just can't get a stick on it. They throw it back towards the front of the net, but it doesn't get there. Herbis has it once more. Herbis, Ranford now. Ranford in front of the net for Smith, intercepted and shot down the ice by Hoff. And Chevaldane back to get it as Seattle tries to change up their penalty kill, and they were able to do just that. Oh, yeah, it's a big kill, I'll say. 2 nothing late in the first. Shot three, 15 to 6. And there's a bit of a turnover, and that creates the point passing, but no more as Seattle intercepts and shoots it down the ice. You know what the Blazers do so well, Dan? Three things. They carry the puck with authority, they pass it with authority, and they shoot it with authority. Boy, they're all business out there when they've got the puck, when that team's in possession of it. There's Allos. He can't get a stick on it. The path does. The path. As he works off the half wall, he gets it behind the net. There's Willick. Now the path once more. Feathers it back towards Cross. Cross puts it behind the net. Uli. Now Willick. Intercepted in front. Allos backhands it down the ice with 20 seconds to go in the penalty. Maybe time for one more rush up the ice on this man advantage for Camels. Good day. Lost it. Now back the other way. Delwoff going in on the backhand. Can't get the shot away. Now he passes in front. Hickman can't get a stick on it. Hickman from back to the goal. Penalty now over. Seattle back at full strength. So that was very important, obviously. Now they definitely want to get out of this period. No less than 2 nothing down. Maybe they can get back with a late one themselves. Hickman as he works off the half wall. Gave it away. Here's Sturzer trying to break free. Sturzer. Still going forward, but taken or falling down more than taken down as he just lost his stride. And now a shot from the point is knocked down by Elliott. At the side of the net, Camelos has it once more. Bell behind the goal. Tchaikovsky trying to get it in front. Camelos Soto. Bell can't hold it in. We're in the final minute of the opening period. Soto will backhand it back into the Seattle zone. Off being watched there by Chimkoski. Two big boys right there. Off, by the way, is six foot six. Has trouble with it, though, back at the goal. Comes back out to the line. Here's Herbis. Herbis. Now Soto. There's Smith. Smith just protects the puck beautifully there. Comes back to the line. Herbis. That's intercepted. Long pass. Fanned on more than anything else. And Camels jumps on it again. The puck has been down here a lot. Hoff 
He can't get it out. Just gave it right away. Gets it back again. This time he plays it off the glass. Can't get it out. And getting out of this period now looks good for Seattle. They needed to because as this period kept going, Bill, it was more and more Camloops. Yeah, you know what? And again, the team in white, the Seattle Thunderbirds, spent so little time in the Camloops Blazers zone. Camloops impressed me, Dan, as much with their defensive play behind their own blue line. That allowed them to generate that offense, and they spent just too much time inside the Seattle zone for Konowalski and his Seattle Thunderbirds. Cole Chevalier, not busy, only had to face six, and really no tough ones for Seattle. 15 to 6, the shots on goal. 2 nothing after 1 as we go to Andy Neal. Andy. Thanks very much, Dan and Bill. Coming up in the first intermission, we will hear from Seattle Thunderbirds general manager Russ Farwell and talk to him about his squad's expectations for the 2012-13 campaign. We'll also go to the WHL Plays of the Week and also rinkside with Tim Bozon after the break. It's the host Kamloops Blazers with a 2-0 lead on the Seattle Thunderbirds through 20 minutes of play from the Interior Savings Center in Kamloops on Shaw. WHL Hockey only on Shaw. Well, welcome back to Kamloops, where the Blazers are leading the Seattle Thunderbirds 2-0 after 20 minutes of play. I am here with Blazers forward Tim Bozon. And Tim, talk about that first period. It looked like a pretty good pace, but maybe not so much. Uh, a lot of room out there. Yeah, it's a pretty good period for us. Uh, Seattle is a good defensive team. They have a big defense, and we have to find uh, the space on the ice to score more goals. And uh, we have the change in front of the net. We have to get the rebound. Talk about the chemistry you have with Lapon and uh, Smith that uh, we talked to uh, Colin before the game and uh, you guys had an unbelievable year last year. Can you take it to another level this year? Yeah, for sure it's going to be harder for us this year. Uh, last year we had a really good season and now uh, we expect that the other line to, to match up against our line, but uh, we like the challenge and we're ready for the, the new season. You started out with a lot of games on the road here, just your second at home so far this season. Four straight here. Will you be looking to build on some momentum on home ice? Yeah, exactly. It's the second game at home. Uh, the building is almost full, and we want to we want to win our key game at home, and that's uh, uh, so what we are looking for this year. And uh, always have a good game at home. Just want to quickly ask you about your summer drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in the third round. How did that feel for you? Well, I was really happy. Montreal is a great organization, and uh, it's a franchise I was looking when I was younger, and uh, I feel really good, and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to work with uh, with them. All right. Good luck the rest of the way, Tim. Yeah. Thanks for this. Thank you. Let's head up to w WHL Control and Andy Neal. Thanks very much, Stu and Tim, as well. Welcome to WHL Central, brought to you by Sierra Sill with Seattle Thunderbirds general manager Russ Farwell. And Russ, just a thought on the opening 20 minutes here with your team down by two. Well, it wasn't too bad for us. Uh, our goaltender has been good all year, and he was good for us, I thought. But uh, we kind of feel guilty, maybe, of feeling our way and waiting, and we can't do that against this team. They got a good team; they're coming there. But I thought it was all right. I think our young D held up, and that's what we're looking to see. And we just got to generate a little more offense. So far through four games, you split those first four. What have you thought of your team's performance in the opening quartet? Well, same thing. We we we've been pretty good. We've been in every game, and and I can see us growing. Uh, we're we're not going to know for 10, 15 games uh, into the year because we we got a lot of change, and we've a lot of guys playing a, dig, a bigger role. I really like our young group on defense, and I'd like to leave them together and see them grow up. So we got to be a little patient on our team this year. Shea Theodore, a third-round pick of yours in 2010. Did you know at the time that he would turn out to be what he has so far? Well, you saw a great talent. He really stood out at the BC best thing, but he played part of that year at forward, and I don't think it was a matter of us. Uh, we, we got lucky with Shea. He's, he's a real talent, and uh, uh, I think a lot of people saw that he had skill, but but it was tough to tell exactly because he played in a little smaller program and he played part of the year at forward. So, you know, it's hard to know. But he he's uh, he had a great year last year and he's gonna he hasn't got going yet as far as this year is concerned. But I think he's gonna be a real real good player. Where does he help you the most on the back end? Well, he's got great vision. He really turns the puck around quick. He starts it out and he he really can put your forwards in home free. And I think he's gonna add a lot of offense from the back end eventually. And you added Jesse Forsberg from Prince George. What does he add to the back end also? Well, Forsberg gives us a real, uh, we needed older, uh, an older presence there and, and that's what he brings. He plays real hard every night. He gives us a real all out effort and he's a great, uh, great role model for our defensive group. So so he he's real good. He plays lots of minutes. He plays those key times uh, in front of the net and in the corners and, and it's great example for guys like Hoff and Green 
and Smith all to see uh, as they take a bigger role on our team. So what's the expectation for Seattle Portland Tri City and Spokane have really been one through three not in that order for the last couple of seasons but can Seattle make the move this year do you feel confident in that. Yeah I think we're looking to do that there's no doubt uh, we, we Portland's got a good team and then they're going to grow but I, I think our team's going to get better and better Spokes got a lot of guys back they got a pretty experienced group up front I'm sure they'll be about the same team uh, we just have to uh, you know we have to take a step all the time and we're, we're going to be able to play all four lines uh, I think our guys are going to get better on the back and, and you're not going to be able to judge our team for a little while yet. Got a couple of 16-year-olds on your roster right now. I wanted to ask you about Michael Holup uh, from Mission, B.C., so not too far away, but uh, what does he bring as a 16-year-old that you liked? Well, Michael's been real good, and, and he's uh, he's got a good natural instinct and read with the puck. Uh, we've been judging him with a pretty hard ruler, you know, because we want to make sure we're going to be able to play him enough. But he played real well in Prince George. I thought he had a good period here, and I, I think he's uh, he's making a real bid to stay and be part of our team. I think he's going to be a real good player offensively. We just wanted to be sure that we were going to play him enough that we were going to have an offensive player at the end of the day. But but uh, he has uh, really gone after a job. And Kevin Wolf, 10th round pick in the Bantam draft, so he's obviously moved up pretty high. Well, that's just a matter of geography. Not many people saw Wolf. He'd gone to Chicago to play as a Bantam. Uh, but he's from Minnesota and then he went back and played midget there but uh, he came at a real good camp uh, our scout had seen him play if he played in Saskatchewan or in Saskatchewan or Burnaby he would have been a top two round pick and it's just uh, we were lucky there and and uh, he's going to be good. Yeah. Well obviously I wanted to ask you about Matthew Barzil and uh, you got a chance to see him for the first time in Seattle colors at training camp. Was he the obvious number one for you when you had that first pick in the Bantam draft. Well he was I, I really think Matthew's a a stand apart guy in his age group. I think he's going to be one of the best guys in his age group in all of Canada. I think he showed that at that uh, uh, Players Association deal when they had it, uh, uh, that group. And, and he's uh, he was really, really good at camp. I think he's a special player, as good a player as I've seen. Uh, and I've had, you know, a few good players come through. He's really an exciting guy to watch. He really understands the game. He plays it the right way. He makes the guys he plays with better. And I'm saying that about a 15 year old. So it's, he's going to be an exciting guy to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And the commitment from him for next year, it must be uh, it must be nice to know going into next season. Well, we don't uh, we're not quite there yet, but no. he, he certainly wants to play and he's been very positive. We, we just have given it time to get to know one another. And uh, I just think he's one of the best guys in the country and, and eventually he's going to you know he's going to come and play and we're excited about that. He's a special guy. I, I think he's really really uh, going to make a, a name for himself very early and, and uh, clearly establish himself as one of the top two or three guys in the country. Very good. Thanks for, so much for doing this Russ. Very good. There's Russ Farwell the general manager of the Seattle Thunderbirds his team trailing by two through one period here against the Kamloops Blazers at Interior Saving Center in Kamloops back with the WHL plays of the week when we return to the WHL on Shaw. Well, this is not only Blazer country, but Canuck country for sure. But tonight, the host Blazers with a 2-0 lead through 20 minutes of play over the Seattle Thunderbirds. Colin Smith and Dylan Willick, the goal scorers so far for Campbell. So well, we're only a couple of seasons or a couple of weeks into the WHL season, but already plenty of great plays throughout the league. And tonight, we have our first WHL plays of the week kicked off by Justin Fazer and a great goal from the Tri-City Americans forward. Win the face off here to start this 2012 2013 season. Are you kidding me? Right away, 11 seconds into this one. Well, there's eight other games going on right now in the Western Hockey League. The Portland Winterhawks starting their East Division trip have a 2-1 lead in the third over the Brandon Wheat Kings. Look at what Swift Current is doing to Saskatoon. 9-1 in the Bridge City right now. They're in the third period. Moving on to the Prince Albert Raiders and the Calgary Hibbon. They are now tied at three. The Raiders coming off that big 4-1 win in Edmonton last night. Meanwhile, the Red Deer Rebels and Regina Pats, they are squared at one through two periods of play. Colton Jobke back for the Pats after being at an AHL camp. Prince George Cougars have opened up a 5-2 lead. They're through 20 minutes of play. Prince George has won 3-4 of four to start the year. They're through 20 against Kelowna. Tri-City Americans have goals from Milan Plutnar and Connor Rankin and have a 2-0 lead on the Lethbridge Hurricanes in Kennewick, Washington. Meantime, Jamie Crooks and Mitch Holmberg have scored tonight. Through 20 in Spokane, the Victoria Royals and the Chiefs. 
are tied at one. That starts a four-game road trip for the Royals. Vancouver Giants badly needing this. They were blasted by Kelowna 7-0 on Wednesday. But they're up 3-0 in the first period on the Medicine Hat Tigers, who blew a 3-0 lead against the Victoria Royals on Wednesday in a 4-3 overtime loss. Well, for more information on the Western Hockey League with links to all 22 teams, just go to the WHL's website at www.whl.ca. And also a reminder that REMAX is proud to support the Western Hockey League and excited to offer fans a chance to win a group of 24 tickets to see their local WHL team at an upcoming game. To enter, visit whl.ca and click on the REMAX Home Team Contest button. REMAX, official realtors of the WHL. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. It's a 2-0 lead for the Kamloops Blazers. Second period is on the way. Blazers and Seattle Thunderbirds on the WHL on Shaw. This is the way junior hockey works. You just cycle around, but a few years ago we used to come in and Kamloops had all kinds of trouble getting out of their own zone. Man, are they a machine back there now. Yeah, they were atrocious behind their own blue line. Guy Sharon, Dave Hunchek have done a wonderful job. I mean, it's only 20 minutes, but they were so solid defensively in their own zone. It's this kind of moves right here. They go back, they close a the gap. Brady got day stops and starts on the puck carrier. Look at the puck pressure in that corner. Who's going to kind of come out of there with it? They actually go back into their own zone in front of their own net. That's a lot of poise defensively. You want more of that defensively? Close the gap right there. Force the puck to the wall. Create scrums along the boards. Win those battles and come up the ice. And so much of your offense starts with good play in your own zone. This is a goal that makes it one nothing. Just good puck movement. Smith. A lot of patience there by Ranford. Has a puck in his skates. Watch the front of the net. What a pass. Colin Smith makes it 1-0 on a power play goal. The 2-0 goal again. Good job by Boza. Stop it there, guys. Tim Bozon has given Jesse Forsberg in white number five. How much space? Watch him. It even gets bigger space. Watch what he does. Stops it there. Closes the gap. Up comes the uh, Blazers. Get that puck wide. This is great by DePap. Stop it. Now Jordan DePap on the far left of your screen cannot get that pass through to Willick. What does he do? Gets it on the net, hoping for a rebound. Beautiful job by Willick. The play was reviewed. This is a response of Willick when he finds it's a goal. It's 2-0 Kamloops and a well-deserved 2-0 lead. And let's look at the summary of the opening period. Those two goals coming at the 12.51 mark, 15.04. So two goals, three minutes apart. Your shots are pretty one-sided, 15 to six. I think Seattle, unofficially from our totals up here, had basically one scoring chance in the first period. They'll need to create more, Bill, and maybe get, get a chance to, of a power play of their own. But you have to generate power plays. And Campbell's been very disciplined so far. As we start this period, the teams are at full strength. Seattle in the white jerseys. By the way, you wonder why they wear white on the road, and sometimes you see not at the halfway mark. I love how the WHL does it. I think it's very smart. Halfway through the season, the team switch. So 36 games in, the home team will be the white team, and the uh, road team with dark colors, which seems to make a lot of sense. The fans get a chance to see both uniforms for half the season. Why not? Cole Shevel, they've now working Dan on four consecutive periods of shutout. Hey, you want a weird stat? Give you one on the weird category. Last game at Victoria, he had a 3-0 win, zero goals against, but one assist. He had more points than he had goals against in a game. I don't know if that's ever been done by a goaltender, but it's the weird or what category. But anyway, Shevel, they perfect tonight after 20. Shaking up early in the air, back in the lineup as of last week. And the more I looked at that goal, I think they got the right call in the 2 0 goal. And there's a tripping penalty that's going to be assessed for Cam Luke. And uh, just what we were talking about, Bill. Maybe Seattle can generate something on their power play. Yeah, is that Landon Cross? It gets caught kind of in a position where he thinks that's all he can do. Look at the puck support. Look at the player support around that. Tim Bowes on 10 feet away. Landon Cross right there knows that was not a good penalty. Seattle has. So far this year, scored three power play goals on 10 chances. Campbell's Blazers, penalty kill, ranked number five. They've only allowed two power play goals against them, the 14 times that they have been shorthanded. So let's see how this plays out. Two nothing, early stages of the second period. First power play for Seattle. Theodore gets it cross ice. Here's Honey at the blue line. Over on the far side there is Delnoff. 
corrals it, plays it down low to Sheen. Down off, hard pass in front for Swenson. He can't get a stick on it, but Cal uh, Sheen now comes up with it. Nice little move in the circle. Here's Honey, tries the backhand pass. Here's Swenson shot, and that's knocked down by Connolly. And Kamloops will get it down the ice. Promising looking chance, but they just couldn't get the lean to get the shot on goal. Jay Theodore, forced back a little bit. He quarterbacked the power play for Seattle last year. Theodore did as a 16-year-old. Terrific prospect. He was part of the Canadian gold medal win at the Ivan Holinka tournament, the Memorial Ivan Holinka U18 event this past summer. Riley Sheen, an acquisition by Russ Farwell this year. Last year, Medicine had 46 games played. One goal, two assists. Well, how about the Western Hockey League, folks? This year in Seattle, four games played, two goals, two assists. It's the beauty of this league. Seattle wins the faceoff. Here's Forsberg. Plays it over to Rouse, who backhands it behind the net. Trying to collect it there is Justin Hickman. Hickman, number nine. Being checked by Gaudet. There's a centering pass, and a shot just goes wide. Lipsburg's had a good opportunity. Maybe the best one they've had in the hockey game. Roberts Lipsburg from Latvia. One of their two imports. Just put that puck wide. Power play continues for another 45 seconds. Today, hammers around the boards and out it goes for Kim. Glover leaving the puck back of the net. More checked by Willick, causing some problems there. But he's all by himself. Nonetheless, he still comes up with the puck. Willick. Taken into the boards a little bit there by Forsberg. 20 seconds to go on the penalty. Look at this penalty kill by Willick. And now the fans are going to start to applaud. That's all by himself. This is incredible stuff. Willick down there. And if he gets a whistle, you'll hear a huge ovation. And there's the whistle. And it should be a bigger ovation because that's as good a penalty kill as you're going to see one on four. Yeah, I can tell you, you know, Dylan Willick, three seasons, he's missed one game. That was back. That's him, number 11. He missed one game, Dan. That was November 28th, 09. And I'm going to tell you why. Coach Guy Chiron that night sat out three players after the team blew a four-goal lead. He wasn't happy with Willick. Look at the work Willick does in the offensive zone, killing that penalty. What a 20-year-old. What a work ethic. Since then, 191 consecutive games in a Kamloops uniform. And with eight seconds to go in the Seattle power play, looks like Campbell's going to kill it, especially now that they've won the faceoff. Herbis from the line, and Glover makes the save, and we'll do it again. Well, that you know, a little adds a little insult to injury. You're at the tail end of your power play. You got an offensive zone faceoff, and not only do you lose the faceoff, you get the puck back to the blue line for a pretty good shot on net. Glover had to make the save. Now three seconds left. You can kiss the rest of that power play goodbye. In fact, I guess you got to worry more about winning that faceoff if you are the Seattle Thunderbirds. They do not, as Campbell comes up with it. They still have possession as the penalty comes to an end. Here's Cross out of the box and onto the right point to take that pass. As it's played down low, the two number 12 is battling for it. Although the far side tipped out there by San Vito. Trying to give chase is Riley Sheen. Allos can't get his stick on it. Kamloops starts back with Cole Yuli. He's got some room here as Yuli brings it to Soto. High shot, sails wide of the net. Now Gaudet tries to hold it in, he cannot. Allos plays it to the open wing and down the ice. So this is icing on the Thunderbirds. Brady Gaudet, an 18-year-old from Redbirds, is really under a microscope this year. And I'm going to tell you why. He's a Bantam first rounder, 10th overall in 2010. He was a healthy scratch 15 games last year. But what a season he's having. He was plus four in the preseason. Right now he's got four points. He's off to a terrific start. And it's really important for him to have a big year. And I'm sure he will. At the side of the net. Chance in front just put wide by J.C. LaPont. Glover slow to get up. He's lost his stick, in fact. Glover getting some help from his defenseman to get his stick back as Seattle gets it out through the center ice area. Brought in over the line by San Vito. Off the stick, and oh, there's a penalty, and it was more the player calling it than the referee, it seemed, because Sheen looked at the referee, and then the arm came up after a stick got underneath his visor, and it's going to be a high stick. I think they've got the right call. I think they're, in fact, going to call four minutes on this one. We'll see how it goes. It's a four-minute high-sticking minor, or double minor, to Connolly, and Seattle will go back to the power play. 
Josh Connolly is Brett Connolly's younger brother. And a terrific chance earlier from that corner here. This is LaPont. Doesn't need much room, but again, watch the three blue-shirted Kamloops Blazers. Their puck pursuit is terrific. It always seems like they've got the triangles to support each other, and there's no, no surprise they're as good as they are, points-wise. Feels like Seattle needs to get back in the game right now. Oh, I'll tell you, it's, it's obviously a must. Oh, except they just went off the power play. Six seconds in, and they go off the power play in the offensive zone as uh, Lockhart is going to go to the box for hooking, and you just cannot take that kind of penalty. Yeah, is it Lockhart or is it Seth Swenson? What, whoever it is, it it's right Swenson, off the faceoff. It's not a smart call, Seth Sw or smart play rather. Seth Swenson came over in that Portland trade with Marcel Nobles. You remember that was a very amazing trade that was made. Nobles went that way. Swenson came towards Seattle with two first-round picks. Here's Gelnoff trying to get loose. Gelnoff right in a goal, and he has it roll off his stick. Didn't get a good shot away. Honey plays it back to the line. Theodore holds, and he can't get a shot. Not yet, anyway. Then he tries to pass. He'll have another opportunity, perhaps, but he can't get his stick cleanly on the puck. Tough luck there for Theodore as he just could not finish the deal. A good opportunity as Ranford now goes in. His shot is stopped. Theodore, who had the game-winning goal in overtime last week in Prince George, had a real good chance there. Yeah, Alexander Delnoff, what speed, played for a team north of Moscow, home of a National Hockey League scout. We talked about him on the pregame show. Good speed to the outside, good job going to the net. He's happy with that rush. He'll love to score. Well, that was a good rush, but I thought the Theodore chance was even better. He just couldn't get the shot couldn't, away. Yeah, exactly. Couldn't handle the puck to get the shot. Now on the four-on-four four, as it continues, Smith tries to feather it in front, gets it right back again. Smith's been all over the puck so far in this game. Look at that on the shot, just off Glover wide of the net. And who gets his own rebound? It's Smith once more. He tries to work it in front. Bozon has the puck. Bozon will feather it back to Smith, and then he'll hit to the front of the net. There's the pass, and it's too high for Bozon to handle. Smith from back of the net for Seattle. He gets it to Jared Hoff. First round Bantam pick, Jared Hoff. Six foot six, 216 pounds at age 17. How big is he going to be when he grows up? That's him with the puck right now. Dan, the danger when you're that big, and this team in Seattle's got a lot of big hockey players, the one danger you're always concerned about is heavy feet. You can be great if your skating is an has an effect on the, uh, you know, on the other team, but right now it's been all Blazers. Hoff probably has been used to being the tallest boy on his team. Ever, I imagine for the last number of years, he's not the tallest boy on this team. He's six foot six, yeah. but Taylor Green is six foot seven. You're always in the back row, aren't you? The school pictures. <laughs> the Bob Euchre seats. The Pap coming out, and his four on four is about to come to an end, and Seattle will go back on the power play here. It was a double minor initially, so Swenson back on the ice, takes the pass at the blue line, and then it has to go off his stick. So third power play now for Seattle, although the second one lasted only six seconds. Dell, nice play in the corner. Gets himself some room, gets himself some time, and he gets it out to the neutral zone. Didn't get it all the way down the ice, but it's good enough as Rouse plays it off the backhand. And here comes Lockhart. Lockhart makes one move, tries to feather a pass towards Rouse. Now it comes over on this side for Sandido. Off the boards he comes. Pass down low. Pass by Lockhart and a save and a rebound over top the net. What a great opportunity. The last one going to Lipsburgs. He put it up high. That's as pretty a play as we've seen Seattle make all night. It starts with Connor Sandido. He's going to circle into the faceoff slot right there. Watch the play there that Lockhart makes. Goes backhand, forehand, and then Litzberg following that play up. This is just a terrific opportunity. And look at Cole Shevel, Dave. That save there, and then a little bit unlucky, or a little bit lucky, rather, from the Kamloops standpoint that that shot there missed the net. But that was some real good puck moving by the Seattle Thunderbirds inside the Kamloops zone. Minute 11 remaining on the power play. Lipsburgs with that opportunity. You know, it's he's not the biggest guy, and one of the situations you always got to watch is you know you don't you don't want to be a perimeter player. 
And if you are, you want to find all the right times to dart into those areas, and he's been doing that. He played for Latvia in the World Hockey Championships. He was an assistant captain, in fact, on that team. Theodore comes out of his own zone. Now Lockhart hits the blue line for Seattle. Lipsburgs shot turned aside by Shevel Dave. Lockhart to Lipsburgs. Lipsburgs. Now back it goes to Rouse. Pass to Lockhart. Throws it in front. Intercepted. Lipsburgs couldn't hold on to it. Here's a shorthanded chance for J.C. Lapon. He brings it in over the line. Can't get the shot away. And Theodore gets possession with a half minute to go in the Seattle power play. Seven and a half minutes gone here in the second period. Both goals scored in the opening period. They came three minutes apart as Kamloops got goals by Smith and Willick for their 2-0 lead. Theodore's having a strong period here. He jumps on that puck, and here he goes. Theodore takes a shot. What a save by Chevaldee. Theodore cutting nicely to the slot area. There's a pass again, and a turnaround shot by Honey. He scores! Honey scores for Seattle late, late, late in the power play, and they are back in it. It's 2-1 for Kamloops. And, you know, I got to believe so much of this offense that Seattle has created in the last, what, minute, minute and a half is a result of Shea Theodore and the things that he's done with a puck. You know, he comes in, forces Shevel. They make a big save on that play. They get that puck back again. Little turnaround, little spin shot, and a nice job by Honey to get that puck over top of the shoulder of Cole Shevel. They have really important for Seattle. Didn't matter where in that power play that they scored first 10 seconds or last 10 seconds they joined this contest honey puts it where the peanut butter is usually stored that high and it's two to one at 742 it's his first goal of the year he had 10 last year theodore gets the first assist and the only assist as you mentioned it was theodore with a two or three good shifts in a row and really did well to make that goal happen. In the meantime, Shevel Day makes the save off Jared Smith. And the Paps got the puck. So there's another power play goal in this game. Two of the three have been scored with the man advantage. And Forsberg back in his own zone. Long lead pass. Gobbled up nicely. Here's Hickman. Hickman tries to back in in front. Herbis makes the play on the back check. And Soto starts back. As he scoots down this wing, he goes right to the net, and Glover may have got a piece of that one. Held in at the line by Jordan Thompson, he puts it back to the net. Working the cycle now, the Camloops Blazers have the puck. Needham trying to work it in front, Soto taken down a little bit. Needham at the side of the net, here's Soto up in front for Needham, and a save made by Glover. Back the other way, Seattle starts back, Elliott. Collision with Herbis. Nice play by Herbis to Thompson, to Needham, in over the line. Needham on the circle, nice pass in front. Following up is Herbis, and he can't get the shot away. Very good shift by Herbis. Back of the goal, Yuli can't get it in front. Herbis, by the way, worth number three last year. Goes to lucky 13 for Kamloops this season. As Lipsburg brings it in over the line. He keeps going on the backhand, and it goes wide of the net. And there's a heavy hit. Soto knocks down Rouse. Yuli on the turnover to Needham. A high shot over top the net. Now we're going a little bit more into end here as it opens up. And Lipsburg comes up with the puck. He tries to make a move. Follow up for Sheen or she uh, Swenson, I should say. I'll get it right. And ne Matt Needham goes back the other way. Needham followed up by Lapon, and his shot is off the target. Hey, we've got good action at both ends as Rouse gets it up for Swenson. Swenson puts it back to the net. Chevalier leaves it there. And a lead pass up for Lapon. Nice little tip to Smith. Smith can't get by the last man. And it's poked out by Seattle. Past the halfway mark of the second period. Seattle's on the puck, on the four check. Delnoff can't get it. Bell's got it for Kamloops. Green on the pinch. High shot. It's a loose right in front of the net and swept away. From the line, a shot doesn't reach the goal. Smith gets it. That was a close call. Seattle nearly tied the game. Check on the boards by Bozon. He can't come up with a clean link. Green for Seattle. Teamers playing their best hockey of the night right now as Honey goes in on the end boards and he hits Conley. That forces this turnover. Dale up in front of the net and Honey couldn't get a clear shot away. His stick was tied up. 
Green from the line. Fans on this first one and then forced out by LaPon. Bell gets the puck. Now it's Smith shooting it down the ice. Here comes Seattle and here comes Shea Theodore. He's what a fun to watch. Look at him go! Wow, it just went wide of the net. Shea Theodore almost went end to end. Beautiful rush up the ice by the 17-year-old from Alder Grove here in British Columbia. And he's gonna scoop back to try to get this puck to hit a Willick. He and Willick tie each other up. Willick comes up with the puck. That's a good play by Theodore. Very disciplined as well. He made sure he did not hit Willick hard into that boards. Today, off the boards. Here's Theodore. Now Forsberg. Now Sheen. Sheen in the neutral zone. Rolls it in. Some of the best hockey of the night being played here is Gaudet, at least from a Seattle standpoint. Cameron's in the first period. It's good. Seattle, since that power play goal, really come on. And here's an opportunity at the side of the net, but they can't get their stick on it. Forsberg can't hold it in, but he does collide with Ranford. Ranford trying to follow it up. Throx will follow it up, and he'll shoot it into the Seattle zone. First period took like 27 minutes to play of running time, and this one, the second period, Seems like it's going along just as quick. Holub goes in, and he's poke check and goes hard into the wall. Holub poke check by Herbis, who's having a very strong second period for Campbell. Yuli for the Blazers now. Tries to get it past Smith. They'll battle on the far boards, and let's see who comes up with it. Forsberg gets it, but he gave it away briefly. Seattle follows it up, however, and here they come with Holub. Now to Elliott. Elliott. As Herbis again. Boy, is Herbis strong in his own zone. Need him to Yuli. Yuli over top the net. Great opportunity for the Blazers. They cannot restore their two goal lead. Now Glover has trouble with a long shot by Conley. And it's tapped out to the neutral zone. Feel free to jump in anytime, Bill. We haven't had a whistle for ages. I'm just sitting back and enjoying it. It's that good a hockey game. Conley puts the puck in. Back of the net. Kevin Wolf tied up there. Hickman's going to come up with it for Seattle. Off the glass to the line. Held in by Bell. Bell puts it back to the net. In front of the goal. Shot just goes wide of the net. Seattle will flip it down the ice. Will not be far enough for icing. And Bell goes back to get it once more. Tyler Bell. Former former rejoined Pat Canadian. Now Bozon. Lepon. His shot. That's knocked down. Goes to the end boards or another battle ensues. Good day on the far side. Shot, save Glover. Rebound up the post. It stays out and Glover jumps on it. Big crowd in the crease. And some pushing and shoving. Wolf taking his man down as well. The Kamloops Blazers unable to get the third goal right there. How close did they come? Wow. 2-1 Kamloops Blazers. On Shaw. With Thunderbirds head coach Steve Connawalchuk and uh, Steve, you got the power play goal. You obviously have some spark. Are you okay with this being a bit of a, more of a track meet now with this team? Well, we, we still got to be better. You know, when we, when we put our pucks behind the D, we're okay. But you know, they're a very good offensive team. We don't want to trade chance for chance. But you know, we got a power play. I seem to relax. We get a little bit of momentum going off that. But we've got to be smarter with the puck. Want to quickly ask you about 17-year-old defenseman Shea uh, Theodore. Is, is it fair to say wise beyond his years so far? Well, you can see what he could do on the puck when he's moving his feet, and he's part of the reason we started getting a little momentum, so he has to keep doing that. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Dan and Bill. Dan, one of the reasons that you're six foot five is you're able to do this right there. Look at Brandon Glover. He's down on his knees and he gets up, gets the shoulder on it, and then look at that concentration right there. Six five goaltender raising that shoulder. He gets a piece of it, deflects off the post, and then finds the puck in the blue paint area. Wonderful sequence by that young man there. Six minutes to go here in the second period. Ranford puts that one wide, goes to the far corner, and then out towards the line where Gaudet puts it back for Ranford, off the end boards, feathers it in front for Willick, and he couldn't get his stick cleanly on it. Lockhart on the back check. Now a backhanded play out of the zone for Delnoff, and it works out okay as he jumps on it at the Kamloops line. Delnoff on his backhand. And now over here, it comes back to the line. Smith barely holds it in, but does. 
Now Willick with possession. Willick. Now to Gade. It comes around the boards. Here's Ranford. Smith for Seattle. Jared Smith is from Surrey. He gets the puck to the line. And it's rolled in. Going in on the fourth check. It's Connor Honey. Honey's been one of the better Seattle forwards tonight. That's him, number 14, with the puck. He obviously scored their goal, but he's had other opportunities as well. And he's been around the puck a lot. Not so much now as he heads to the bench in a line change. Puck goes down the ice. No icing here as Hoff goes back for it. Ranford looked up at the referee to see if he was going to be penalized. Was not. Rouse in over the line. That's offside. Swenson in a bit too soon. This is what... Uh, Kona Walchuk was talking about Shea Theodore. A lot of hype on this young man. Look at him dancing on his skates. That's how you can tell. He looks light on his skates. Good skaters like float. And this is what you talked about that. Watch him go back and look at that. That is discipline. He could have creamed Willick on that point, but you called it. He pulled back. That's wonderful discipline. Great play at both ends of the ice by Shea Theodore. That's him with the puck passing it over here. And then Soto trying to follow it up for Kamloops. Yuli does. Here's Needham now in over the line. Needham drop pass. It goes. Soto takes the shot up high and out of play as we go down now to Stu Walter. Stu. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dan. And we just talked to Steve Conowalchuk about Shea Theodore and uh, Bill take that nicely. But uh, Conowalchuk telling me even before the game, we talked about him being wise beyond his years. He says, as a coach, when he looks back and sees the 17-year-old in deep in their own zone with the puck, he doesn't worry one bit because he knows he can skate it out with ease, never worried about turnovers or anything like that. That's quite a compliment for a 17-year-old in this league. And most of their defensemen are 17. Only Forsberg has uh, got... You know, more experience at age 19. Here's Sheen going in for Seattle. Sheen puts it up high. He tried to go stick side up high, and he wasn't far off. J.C. LaPon now for Kamloops. LaPon in front for Smith. Rolls off his stick. What a difference the first period and the second period for Seattle here. I mean, that goal has really brought them to life. Yeah, you knew it would, too. And they just keep their battle levels high. And the key is Brandon Glover has been just terrific for this team. He's really held them in this hockey game. Shots at 23 to 14 in favor of Kamloops, who were only outshot last year 20 times in 72 outings. And over the line, here comes San Sanvito in front for Allos. And he redirects it off the target. Allos heads to the bench wearing Patrick Marlowe's old number 12 jersey. For the... Do you remember those <laughs> days? You never forget those days. Oh, yeah. Still Boy, that was my initiation into the Western Hockey League back in the mid-90s. I remember Russ Farwell telling us, we drafted a kid in Bannon. He will be a number one overall NHL draft one day. Well, first rounder, he said, or high number well, one. Well, he was second overall. Yeah, I mean, that was Marlowe. They knew, our, they knew they that knew pass. At 14. Here's the path going towards the net, and it's Glover making the save off Ranford. I thought he was going to give it to the path. But Ranford just kept going, and now Glover makes a nice save on the redirect by Ranford. And there's a push and a bit of a shove, and there's going to be a face-off as this game continues to go up tempo and become a little bit more physical as well. You can't stay with a puck carrier any better than Glover does right here. Watch the goaltender. Stays with them. Big size, long legs, able to close that off and follows that play right there up. Ah, that's wonderful. Great job, Glover, making that save on Ranford. Shut him right down and follow that up with another quick save, and that's a re result of the faceoff in his zone. You know, I alluded to it earlier, two weeks ago tonight, they open in Portland, and there's 55 shots on goal, and Glover, I mean, could you ask for a better start with your new team than what Glover provided? And I'm sure that will be looked at for Seattle for some time. He must have thought he was Calvin Pickard facing all that rubber. <laughs> Calvin Pickard moved on to the next level. Here's Lipsburg's shot. That's turned aside by Day, but here's Green now. Lipsburg's at the side of the neck. He's going to the other side, in front, and Day down makes the save. Right on the store step, Swenson was there. So too was Rouse, and they were that close to tying the game. This is the first time that I can recall in this game where all three Seattle Thunderbirds are around the paint looking for pucks to put in the net. That's Lipsburg. They're hacking at it. They're whacking at it. Brendan Rouse is in there. Count him. One, 
There's a chance. Look at, I mean, that, he's just on his stomach. Can't make any other save. But you get Seattle Thunderbirds in there hacking and whacking. We didn't see that in period number one. Hey, Bill, this is turning into a heck of a game here. 2 1 late in the uh, second period now. And there was a time in the first where you didn't know if that would be the case. And that from the line, Theodore shot it, sitting right there. The puck is still there, and they cannot hammer it home. Oh, wow. We have a tremendous location for plays at this end, and I'm telling you, it felt like we could reach down and hammer that in. Yeah. It sat in there forever. It felt like that, and you know, Luke Lockard couldn't possibly get his stick on that puck. This is theater. Look at him dance along the line. There's the shot. Now, folks, focus on that puck. <laughs> Look at oh, it. Oh, Lockhart. Br and Brady Gaday. Gaday is the last guy to kind of get in there. Here, there, good luck. Where is it? Where is it? I, oh, he's reaching under his bum trying to find it. No, it's an awful feeling. You can't feel anything there, Lockhart. Bill, they're calling a penalty shot, and here it is. Well, it's because Gaudet must have fallen on it. Honey goes in on the penalty shot, and Chevaldeed makes the save. So busy looking at the replays, and they announced the penalty shot. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I told you it's turning out to be quite a game. Well, let's take another look at the chance, folks. There's the puck. Everybody's trying to get at it. I kind of wondered when number seven, Brady Gaudet, jumped into that spot there. Must have had the puck underneath him. And then the penalty shot. Connor Honey, in he goes. Wow. There's some serious action here. Dan, they didn't take... They didn't take long to review that goal. They didn't take long to review this play there either. Oh. These referees are right on top of it. The penalty shot was happening almost while we were in the replay. <laughs> no kidding. Under two minutes to go in this second period. Allos goes to throw a check. Bell now comes up with the puck for Camels. For a moment, I thought Camels was calling timeout, and then all of a sudden they say, no, it's a penalty shot. Needham. We have a great view of this one end, as I mentioned, but we don't get to hear the PA very well here. That's the one, the one, the announcements we don't hear all that well. Here's a centering pass, and it looks like a Campbell's player taken down, but no call there, and the Blazers, or rather the Thunderbirds, up with it. And here comes Theodore again. He's so fun to watch tonight. Theodore, long reach, drops it back. And now from the blue line, Swenson shot. Theodore holds, and he can't find a shot. Now he tries again, and it goes off a leg wide. Who's the best player on the ice in this period? It's number 17, White. The period is now down to its final minute. And Seattle keeps on coming. Swenson rolls it in. G'day trying to get his stick on it. Swenson in on the forecheck. Goes on to LaPon. Has Smith with him. Lead pass. Colin Smith. Now LaPon throws it in front. The Blazers had a very good first period. Seattle's had a very good second period. I think it's setting up for a, well, you never know, but maybe a real good third period. We'll see how it plays out. Meantime, 24 seconds to go in this one. And almost a turnover there. Shovel Dave well out of his net, making sure Lipsburgs didn't get his stick on the puck, and Cross gets it up to J.C. LaPon. LaPon, up for Tim Bozon, he's got room. Bozon winds up, shoots, and Glover well out, makes the save. Nowhere for Bozon to put it, as Glover was a step up front of that blue shaded crease. You know, Bozon's got those good hands, but when you come down that left wing and you telegraph your shot the way Bozon does right here, I mean, that's the key for Glover to get out to that position. Cuts the angle off beautifully, takes the puck right into his midsection. And he knows that right there, balls on things. If I didn't pick a corner, I had no chance on that. Seven seconds to go in the period. Willick tries to get it in front of the net, cannot hop, will guide it to the corner. Delnoff will have no more time as it runs out, but Seattle will take some confidence for sure into the dressing room. And Kamloops still up 2-1 in their own building. Dan, I don't know about you, but I swear I'd be I'm watching a game in April. I, this is playoff hockey for me, and here it is just in October. This is a terrific 40 minutes of Western Hockey League action. You can't, folks, you can't miss a third period. 26-18 of the shots through two periods in favor of Kamloops as we send it back now to Andy Neal. Bill and Dan, a dandy second period between the Thunderbirds and the Blazers. We'll talk with Stu Walters, who has a Seattle Thunderbird after the break. We'll also hear from John Keen, the voice of the Kamloops Blazers, and a look at Hunter Shinkarek, one of the top prospects for the 2013 
NHL draft. It's a 2-1 lead for the Kamloops Blazers over the Seattle Thunderbirds through 40 minutes of play at Interior Saving Center on the WHL on Shaw. Blazers with a 2-1 lead over the Seattle Thunderbirds. Connor Honey got the Thunderbirds on the board with his first of the season, but then stopped on a penalty shot late in that second period, which could have tied the game for Seattle. But nonetheless, a very good middle frame for Seattle. Let's hear from Stu Walters, who's got Jesse Forsberg. Thanks very much, Andy. And uh, Jesse, just talk about that second period and your guys' response. Are you happy with that on the road? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we came out in the first, and I thought we did some things really well, but, uh, you know, obviously a couple breakdowns there. And, uh, you know, we came on the second, and we really wanted it, and we, uh, I think we all played them that period. Has the ice opened up? Is this a fun one to play in right now? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really fun. You know, they're, they're always a fun team to play against. They're very fast, and, uh, you know, it's a really high-tempo game right now. You're used to battles with the Blazers being in this BC division four years with Prince George. How has the transition been after the off-season trade? Oh, it's been unreal, you know. Um, I, I don't know what more I could ask for. It's a really good situation for me, and I'm having a blast here in Seattle. How about the coach, Connor Walchuk, telling me before the game he relies on you big time for your leadership, also playing against the other team's best players. Is that what you want as a player? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think I, I really learned how to be a leader in Prince George and, uh, you know, come over here to carry that over. And um, I, I really got their, their faith in me, so it's a really good situation here. Pretty unique experience in Prince George. You played with your younger brother, Alex. Uh, now not playing with him. Did you like playing with him, or is it better this way, or what do you prefer? Um, I love playing with him. He's my best friend, and, uh, you know, it was obviously uh, something really special, but, uh, you know, I just felt it was uh, the best thing for me to get a new start here and, um, you know, just get my head cleared. All right, thank you very much for this, Jesse. Good luck in the final 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Let's head up to WHL Central, Andy Neal. Thanks very much, Stu and Jesse. WHL Central brought to you by Sierra Sill with John Keane, the voice of the Cameroon Blazers. Good to see you again. How about a thought in the first 40 minutes tonight? Pretty good second period from Seattle to get back in it. Yeah, you know, credit Seattle for getting back and, and generating some momentum. It started, I think, on that double minor on the power play when they got it going. And they're doing a good job inside Blazer territory. They're getting pucks in, and the Blazers have been a bit soft in their own zone in that period. And Seattle's generated some opportunities because of it. Well, obviously for Kamloops, the expectations are quite high yeah. this year after 47 wins a year ago. What about for you? What do you think it's going to take for this team to make that next step, perhaps to a WHL final? Well, no doubt last year that was a big step taken by the team, and, and hopefully it lays the groundwork a little bit here uh, for the Blazers. You know, they, they got by Victoria in the series sweep on that series here on Shaw, and then, and then went through and, and battled Portland hard, fighting back from 3-0, and they really feel that, that that was the groundwork for this season. They want to pick up where they left off. What do they need? Well, they have a great goaltender already. Their back end, I think, would love to see Austin Madaisky come back from uh, Springfield of the American Hockey League. That's up in the air right now. And this team can score, so that shouldn't be a problem. But I think a uh, defenseman or two away from, from really being uh, categorized as an elite team. Has the team made any sort of percentage on what the likelihood is of Madaisky coming back? Is is there a chance that he does return to Kamloops? Well, 50-50 was the word we heard uh, from Blazer management at, at some point. Now, the lockout will help his chances of coming back. There's uh, 11 defensemen at the Springfield camp, uh, and he's uh, two, uh, one of two rookies on the group. There's four players with NHL experience with Columbus. So who knows? I mean, if, if he has a great camp and he sticks, well, then great for, for Austin Madaisky. But if he comes back, then the Blazers have a, a 20 year old situation now with four. Now, obviously, getting Brendan Ranford back, boy, what a boon that is for the team. Yeah, that wasn't really a surprise. Uh, you know, he's not signed, and he was a free agent invite, a, a late invite somewhat, and, and he went in there and had a good camp. But the, the fact is, they have so many uh, players there in Hamilton under contract that Ran Ranford really had a, a real slim chance and, of sticking. So he's back, and he wants to have a huge year here. So who steps up? Who maybe didn't get the ice time last year that, that might be of expectations to really step up this season? I think that third line you're seeing tonight with Matt Needham, with Chase Soto, and Cole Uli, that's a line that'll see more ice time. Uh, Cole Uli had three goals on the weekend in Victoria from a third line role. That's huge. But but really, up front, there's, there's so much depth. Where the open audition is right now is really on the back end. Guys like Tyler Bell looking to make that next step. Landed Cross. Brady Gaudet, guys that you're seeing here profile tonight. And, and young Jordan Thompson will get a lot of chance to show what he has as a 16-year-old, the highest ever uh, Blazer Bantam pick. So the blue line's a bit of a work in progress, but I think they've shown some good signs here early. 
Now you saw the Victoria Royals on the weekend there in Spokane tonight and trailing last we saw, but are they the biggest challenge for Kamloops going into this year, do you think, out of the BC Division teams? Well, the BC Division is all improved. I think every team has taken a step forward. Maybe not Vancouver. They've struggled out of the gates, but Victoria's got a great top six there. I like what they have. Their goaltender, uh, the import, uh, Polivka, has looked good. Uh, Prince George is a much improved team. Can't wait to see what they have to bring in the regular season. Kelowna has a lot of talent and the best back end in the division, but yet to, yet to get it together here. Uh, I think the division's a good one all around, and I think the Blazers won't have the easy way they had last year dominating the BC division at times. Well, you had probably the most famous end of third period goal last year on the goal by Bronson Mashmeyer in game six. I mean, everybody was talking about that game and the comeback, but for you personally to be in that situation calling it, I mean, what was that like? Uh, you know, you mentioned it, Andy. I just had shivers go up after what happened just down here and and uh, to be down five to two against Portland in the uh, third period and, and come back to tie it, take the lead, and then have Portland score. And then with Mashmeyer, the goal, the place went nuts with 20 seconds left. And it was it was a surreal feeling in this building. It was it was unreal. And I think it was it reminded people of the, the glory days and the noise in this place. And I think it really laid the foundation for for this season. And uh, we wish Bronson the best of luck. He's uh, now over in the St. FX. But uh, I told him that goal was his defining moment with his franchise. So uh, that was a great goal. And it was a great night here in the rink. Well, and it was a great call, too. Thanks so much for joining us, Thanks, John. Danny, for Appreciate it. There's John Keane, the voice of the Kamloops Blazers through two. The Blazers up 2-1 on the Seattle Thunderbirds. We'll come back and have a story on Hunter Shinkarik, a big-time prospect for the 2013 NHL draft when we return to ISC and Kamloops and the WHL on show. Back in Kamloops where the host Blazers are 20 minutes away from their fourth win in five games to start the 2012-13 campaign. Welcome back to WHL Central, brought to you by Sierra Sill. Well, the Medicine Hat Tigers are making their way through BC. They're playing the Vancouver Giants tonight. And without 61 goal man Emerson Edom, the pressure is now on Hunter Shinkarik. And he's our spotlight in the Husky profile this evening. Shinkarik off to a good start this year. He scored again against Victoria on Wednesday. And we have this profile on Hunter. My name is Hunter Shinkarik, and this is my third year with the Tigers. Ball tail moment to Shinkarik. Shinkarik, the shot, he scores! Hunter Shinkarik! Here's a chance, Shinkarik. He'll break it all on the Brassois and scores! I grew up in Calgary, Alberta, uh, in a small community called Elbow Park. My goals for this season uh, you know, are definitely to win a Memorial Cup with this team. Uh, you know, try, try to be a, a big contributor for the team all year long. and. Uh, you know, it's my NHL draft year, um, you know, so try to get try to get drafted this year. But the type of uh, game I play is uh, an offensive forward. Uh, you know, I'm a skilled forward. Uh, love to score goals and create offense. Uh, the best part of junior hockey is, uh, you know, for sure being on the road with the guys. Uh, you know, obviously we spend the whole year together and, uh, you know, we have some jokes, uh, you know, all year. So, you know, it's a good time to, you know, to know your teammates and, uh, you know, just bond with them. My very first hockey memory uh, would probably have to be, uh, I think I was three, and uh, I went out, I was the, the little guy who skates before the games uh, for the Calgary Hitmen. I remember I lined up after the anthem and they, they had to you know, kind of carry me off the ice. I thought I was playing, so being named the captain of uh, the Tigers this year was, was something that was pretty you know, unbelievable. Uh, obviously at 17 to be named captain of a WHL you know, franchise is, is something that you know, I couldn't imagine when I broke into this league and you know, it's something that I'm very honored and very humbled uh, you know, to have and you know, obviously we have a lot of great leaders in this team so you know, the fact that this organization put that trust in me to be captain is something that you know, I t take a lot of pride in. You know, I gave up a lot of you know, a lot of different things that a teenager goes through, uh, you know, partying and everything like that. You know, I gave up all of that to, uh, you know, to work on my, on my game. And, you know, it's been something that, you know, I'm very happy I did. Uh, there's nothing I'd rather do than play hockey for the rest of my life. So, uh, you know, I'm a guy who, who loves to score. Uh, that's definitely my favorite part of playing hockey is, you know, seeing that puck go on the net. And, you know, I think I just get so excited that, uh, you know, I just really love to celebrate. You know, a lot of people say, you know, when you celebrate, act like you've been there before, but, um, you know, I, I act like you know, this may, may, may be my last goal I ever score, so, you know, I'm going to celebrate it like it's the last one I ever score, so, uh, you know, I just get so excited and, uh, you know, I usually drop to one knee or, you know, jump in the glass and, you know, try to get the fans real excited.
Gallagher is one of definitely the most entertaining players in the WHL, and he's also the Denny's WHL Player of the Week as he went through September 24th through 30th with five assists and a goal for six points. And so far on the season, five goals or five assists, eight points on the year for Hunter, and he will be one of the top prospects for the 2013 NHL draft. Let's look at what's going on out of town. Start with some finals. The Portland Winterhawks begin their East Division trip with a 2-1 win over the Brandon Wee Kings as the winning goal comes courtesy Alex Schoenborn. So 2-1 for Portland. Saskatoon got hammered at home by Swift Current tonight. 10-1 the final. Adam Lowry and Levi Buse each with a pair in the victory for Swift Current, their second win of the season. The Regina Pats, they get a big victory over the Red Deer Rebels. That's a 3-2 final as Colton Stevenson, or Dyson Stevenson, got the uh, winner for Regina. So a 3-2 win for the Pats. Prince Albert is in overtime with Calgary after their win over Edmonton. That's now in a shootout, so PA will get a point again. They've had one in all six of their games, trying to get another win on the road in Alberta. Meanwhile, the French George Cougars, through two periods, have a 6-2 lead on the Kelowna Rockets. French George has won three of its first four this season. Zach Bochero and Brock Hershey, both with a pair for the Cougars. Tri-City is up on Lethbridge, 3-1. Plutonar, Rankin, and Fieser, the goal scorers for Tri-City. Spokane Chiefs have a couple for Mitch Holmberg. They're up on the Victoria Royals. 3-1 in Spokane. The Chiefs have won two of their first three games. And the Vancouver Giants, who were shut out on Wednesday, they have a 4-0 lead on the Medicine Hat Tigers. They're in the second period of play at the Pacific Coliseum. And for more information on the Western Hockey League with news and highlights, go to its website at www.whl.ca. As well, Remax he is proud to support the Western Hockey League and excited to offer fans a chance to win a group of 24 tickets to see their local WHL team at an upcoming game. To enter, visit whl.ca and click on the Remax Home Team Contest button. Remax, official realtors of the WHL, outstanding agents, outstanding results. Third period's on the way with Kamloops up on Seattle 2-1. Dan Russell alongside Bill Wilms who's going to show us some highlights and I would imagine you have a few Seattle highlights because they weathered a bit of a storm in the first and they finally got a goal and once they got their goal they were a good team. Yeah their speed made all the difference they were able to generate something and drive some people back. This is Delnoff we talked about him right at the top look at him beat two defensemen Thompson and finally Herbis and takes that puck to the net. You know the rest of it really is this guy here. <laughs> Doesn't get much prettier than that. I think that set the tempo for a lot that happened in that period. Look at 17th Theodore in deep. You want the puck in his hands. That it is. Top of the slot area. Stays with it. Two chances. 17 white. Shea Theodore. First rounder, folks. I guarantee you. Here he comes again. That is a key move for defensemen on the rush to get it to there. They follow that chance up. Connor Honey says, got to get it back to the blue line. He gets a nice soft spot there, spins and shoots. Watch it down low. Connor Honey gets that puck. Says, you know what? Theater's hot. Get it in his hands. Nice turn. Nice shot. Nice goal. Nice period. And let's look at a summary of the period now. The uh, only goal scored by Honey. At 7.42, pouncing on the puck just like Tori DiRoberto used to in the mid-90s. <laughs> you know, I wonder how many viewers remember Tori DiRoberto. I loved him, number 18. Oh, yeah. Oh, Gave yeah. it all every night. You know, one of my favorite, not favorite, but one of my clearest memories is that game in the old Kelowna Arena. I remember that. Jamie Paul had given up a, a play yeah. in overtime or late in the game. I mean, that was kind of our introduction as well to Seattle hockey. I always loved the uniforms, didn't we? Yeah, they, their uniforms are great. And as they start this period, they are at equal strength. Good job, good job, Seattle good job. Coming out of their own zone. Lead pass up towards Forsberg. Doesn't click. Forsberg goes wide. Forsberg goes in. His shot. Snuck through on Shevel Dave, and this game in the first minute of the third period is now 2-2. You know, the, the Seattle Thunderbirds are able to come out of their zone untouched. Nobody near there. In fact, they mishandle a puck. How do you get two chances like that? You can't. Watch Connor Honey. He's in the crease right there. I'm not sure if he's the last guy to touch this puck or not. 
couple oh, mistakes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You know, you see them come out of their end untouched. You see them get two chances in the neutral ice area, mishandling the puck, and then getting that puck to Connor Honey in front of the net. Connor oh. Honey played in the U.S. Hockey League last year in Green Bay. He billeted with a family that had season tickets to the Green Bay Packers. Why is he a Green Bay Packer fan, Connor Honey? Because they wear the same colors as his favorite team in the CHL from his hometown in Edmonton. Two goals tonight. Connor Honey has got this game tied. 39 seconds in, and that was a great pass by Forsberg. And the lead pass, the subtle good pass to lead the rush was by Jared Smith, Bill, as he got them going out of their own zone. Smith got it to Forsberg, and then Forsberg with the play to Honey, who puts it in for the 2-2 goal. And the place is quiet here in Kamloops as the Blazers had a 2-0 lead in the first period. Bows on now. Remember, Honey also had a penalty shot that he did not score on flirting with a hat trick of sorts already in this game. Smith now back to the line. Long shot by Herbis. Knocked down and it's shot out by Seattle. Herbis back to collect the puck. Here's Smith now. Smith going in. Smith takes a shot and that goes off the stick and now to the corner as Green goes back to collect the puck. Green almost forced off it. Then he is forced out. Here's Needham. His shot. That hits the stick. And that goes wide. Just wondering if Theodore was shaken up here because we haven't seen him. Sort of shifted to I told he was sh shaken up. But we'll get on that. The star of our highlight package between periods. Green now from back of the net. And here comes Seattle out of their own zone. Riley Sheen passing the skates of San Vito. Sheen has to go back. He lost the puck, but it is offside at the blue line. I think we got some talk about Shea Theodore maybe having a knee problem. He's sitting right at the end of the bench there. He got a shot in the leg, Bill, and he barely got himself off. Have a look. 17, white, and it's off the foot. There he is, 17. Where does that hit him? In yeah, place, right, right leg in inside. In a place you don't like. Yeah, puck hurts. Yikes. Remember I said last time the Saskatoon Blades have got all their defensive wearing ankle guards? Might that have made a difference on that play? Not sure. Every time I see a player get hit with a puck like that, I think of the very cheerful Todd Bertuzzi who played for the Vancouver Canucks, and he told the reporters after the game, I don't know if you guys know this, but when that puck hits there, it hurts. <laughs> I, I just said that, didn't I? Not the same cheerful way. <laughs> but we'll watch for him as he's still at the bench, but he's kind of looking halfway towards the trainer, halfway towards the ice surface. Game time, Smith from back to the net. Game tied 2-2. Smith forced off the puck. Good check there by Kamloops on Jankowski. Now on the boards, working to get the puck, and he cannot. Rob Jankowski, the first blazer to wear jersey 37 in their history. Nice acquisition from Calgary. Jankowski, big guy, tough guy. Rolling it back to the net. He remains at the bench, but looks like he's still in quite a bit of discomfort. Off with it. It's one of those things where you don't really want to take the skate off, that's for sure. Now he's standing at the bench and being looked at by the athletic therapist. That's Phil Barney looking at him. Meantime, Honey goes in. Lockhart tries to get in front for Honey, and he couldn't get his stick on it. Comes back out now towards Green. Green puts it behind the net. There's a centering pass. Back of the goal. Lockhart hits to the front of the net and they can't get the pass to him. And here comes Campbell. Lasers bring it in. Here's Ranford. Ranford going in in front of the net. And it's stopped by Glover. Centering pass once more. Scores!
Jordan DePaps, the guy that leads the rush out of the zone, gets it to Ranford. That pass is blocked. But watch Jordan DePaps, 17. That puck's going to come to him off that back wall. Jordan DePap only played 14 games. Oh, but what a nice job he is of backing away from the traffic. Only played those 14 games last year. Was hurt. And then this year in his first four, Dan had, didn't have any points. And there he goes. There you hear the call. Jordan of the season. DePap. The assist to number 19, Brendan Ranford. Well, Ranford on the first assist. And Dylan Willick. Willick. The other line mate the goal, in on the goal, so the time of the goal is 428, and Camlos leads once more 28 to 2 as Swenson goes in over the line. Swenson going hard to the net, and Chevalier makes the save. Swenson comes up with the puck once more. It's poked out now by Camlos. Lapon giving chase. Lapon trying to come up with the puck, and he cannot. He does finally get the puck to the corner. I'll tell you that Theodore went to the dressing room. He's no longer at the bench. Theodore is at the dressing room. He might have come back. But he went at least for a little bit, and now he is out on the ice, but he is hobbling. He is on the ice right now for Kamloops, or for uh, Seattle, rather, and he is definitely feeling the pain, but he doesn't want to stay out of this game. He's coming to your picture in a moment, I'm sure. Not quite yet. There he is. Theodore back on the ice, Bill, but he is in discomfort. Seth Swenson, another guy... That's one of those big forwards. You want these guys taking pucks to the net. You saw Delnoff do it earlier. Let's see how Seth Swenson does on that play. Gets around a defenseman, but Cole Shevel, they right there to make that save. But again, good speed in the outside. The success that Seattle's had tonight has been when their speed has backed the Blazers off a bit. We saw so much of that in the second period. And again, even though uh, Connor Honey got them tied at two, Jordan DePap has given this Kamloops Blazer team a 3-2 lead. Theodore cross ice it goes. Off. Throws it into the Camelot zone. Tyler Bell back to get it. There's a turnover on the four check. Shot is knocked down. Elliott trying to get the stick on it. Has another opportunity. Quick shot. And Chevalier gets his arm on it. Pickman in the corner. Now Elliott comes off the corner boards. Takes a shot. Doesn't reach the net. And Bell's got it. Tyler Bell gets it to the neutral zone. Stirs her. Pop trying to take him out. Sturzer still on his feet. Elliott trying to reach it, cannot. Dumped down low by Campbell. Sturzer and Hoff again battling. And they maintain their battle back of the goal. Finally, Seattle gets possession, knocks it off the boards. Down the ice, but this will not be icing. Theodore goes back to the bench now. Seattle makes a change, and we'll see if he has a little word with the trainer and how it feels. Puts the puck in. Smith. Jared Smith knocks the puck off the boards out to the neutral zone. Willick. He can't come up with it cleanly. As it bounces around, Forsberg looks like he's going to be able to send it in. Shots in the game are 29 to 21 in favor of the home team. Zandito had to get away from him. Willick will give chase against Forsberg. Forsberg gets some position, but he cannot get the puck. Crafty Willick coming up with it. And they'll go and battle once more back to the net. Forsberg takes him out, tries to pin him, but there's a centering pass and a save! Off Ranford, another chance in front, they score! Dylan Willick makes it 4-2 with his second of the night. They call these guys the 60 line. They're all 20 years old. Look at Willick in that corner. Protects that puck beautifully. I mean, there's just puck support terrific. How does that puck come from that corner? A wonderful pass to the front of the net, the original save, and Willick, who really made it all happen, is the guy that gets the goal. What a nice job to fend off his check. He was a handful for Jesse Forberg that entire shift. Fourth exactly. goal, his third of the season, his second they of the game. They just kept battling and battling. And, and it wasn't like Forsberg was doing a poor job. Willick just did a better job. Brantford with a great pass. Willick put it up high. Lapon gets the second assist, but it was mainly the first two. Willick and Ranford that made that goal happen. 
So Kamloops, who started this game with a two-goal lead, had to get away from them, are back up by two. And that's just a team with so much offense. They've got so many weapons. They can beat you in so many ways. You know, Seattle Thunderbirds, Dan, a light-scoring team. You know, you go back to the 09-10 season, that's 216 games. They've only scored 540 goals. They've only won 71 games during that time the Thunderbirds have. So, you know, they came into tonight's game with a little bit of confidence. They had tied the game up at Prince George, 1951, and then won in overtime. They got this game tied here tonight, but... The, you know, the Kamloops Blazers just a little too much offense. Delhoff puts the puck in for Seattle. Connor Honey with both goals for the Thunderbirds on the end boards trying to come up with the loose puck. Or dig it out or get a face off. Take your pick. It's door number three on this occasion as we'll get a face off and a chance to visit with Stu. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dan. Uh, just uh, talking about Shea Theodore there, uh, after he got stung in the right foot, uh, came over, the trainer gave him a couple ibuprofens, washed it down with some water, hummed and hawed about it, went for a walk down the tunnel, went for a walk down the hallway, then the Blazers scored to make it 3-2. When he heard the crowd cheer, he ran right back down the tunnel and uh, came right to the bench and was out on the uh, next shift. So that's how bad he wants to get back out there. Now they got a two-goal deficit, so we'll uh, see how he goes the rest of the way. Certainly out there with a, a little gingerly, as you might say, but uh, he's fighting through it but showing great leadership. Here's the goal being scored. It says, I want to be a part of this. There's a centering pass, and that's blocked, and back the other way for Seattle. Here comes Brendan Rouse. He rolled it in, and Shevel Dave collects it, holds on. You know, Brendan Ranford, if you have a look at this little action, it has been this kind of a game behind the net. Cooler heads prevail, but watch Brendan Ranford here. He'll dump that puck in and chase it down. I mean, that's the difference in this guy's conditioning this year. He's just that much quicker, that much obviously faster to get those, get to those pucks. And, you know, we said right off the top, we featured Brendan Ranford, a 20-year-old that I'm going to tell you right now, I, I believe with all my heart, he's going to be one of those nice stories in the Western Hockey League. We've seen so many of them in the past, Shinneman, Manning from Chilliwack, guys that are getting signed as a free agent in their 20-year-old year. And speaking of three 20-year-olds on the same line, Shinman for Tri-City, part of a group there that might have been, I don't know how often they played all those 20-year-olds on the same line, but there certainly were some next a couple years back. Yeah, they all the three of them were, uh, you know, Winnipeg guys. Will Gosh, Huseman, Shinneman. Always a handful to say those guys real fast. But our friend Craig West had no problem down there calling those games. Huseman to Shinneman. Shinneman to Huseman. And with a roll of about uh, 40 pencils with an eraser around them. Play by play voice of that team for, and still is. Buck rolled in by Herbis. And it rolls nicely. In fact, they can make a full change, and they are able to do just that. Long pass. That goes up through the neutral zone. Hickman now into the offensive zone. Allo's in there as well, trying to dig the puck free, but it's taken off his stick. And Connolly over on the far side for Kamloops. Bell plays it up. Turnover, Sheen, down low, Hickman tries to fight, feed Ellos, but he couldn't get a Hickman at the side of the goal. Can't get his stick on the puck. And Sheen can't hold it in. Forsberg overskates it a little bit. Ellos follows up to help out, but he can't get it in deep. Here comes Bozon. Bozon going wide. Bozon throws it in front. Chance for Smith, and that's stopped by Glover. Seattle will send the puck down the ice. This will be icing, and with 9.22 to go in the third period, we're going to step aside. Kamloops has two goals in this period, including Jordan DePap, and it's 4-2 for Kamloops. Third of the season, 4-2 Blazers. 28 goals last year for Willick. Off to a terrific start. Kamloops has a half a period to kill off the clock. It's their second two-goal lead of the night. Theodore back out there. There's 
wondering maybe if he might uh, take a turn or two off here or not even finish the game, but he's quite a competitor. He's still out there. Glove hand pass stops the play. Guy Chiron has been saying for a, a couple of years now that he realized early on in his tenure as a Kamloops Blazer coach that he may have been a little too soft on his guys in respect to what he demands. And I think together with Dave Hunchak now they got the perfect combination behind the bench. But you know right now Guy Chiron's got one thing in mind and that is you've got to find a way guys to make sure you get out of this hockey game with the two points a game you lead 4-2 with 858 left in period three. First of a four game homestand for Kamloops. They'll be hosting Medicine Hat here tomorrow. They also have Victorian Spokane coming in on this homestand. Then they'll head to the Central Division for five games. Seattle, on the other hand, home to Everett tomorrow. They're starting off with four of their first five on the road, 14 of their first 19 away from home. Here's Honey going in. Honey right in on goal and it rolled off his stick. Honey has had a terrific game. He's had two goals. Plus a missed penalty shot, and then that opportunity. It was all over the place tonight. Here's Ranford. Ranford, if you joined us late, returned from American Hockey League Hamilton, where he was out for a tryout. He returned yesterday. So he had missed a couple of games with Camels. He started the season with Camels, then he went up to the Hamilton training camp. Need him. On his back end, puts it back at the goal. There's Soto rebound. Oh, and Yuli had a golden opportunity, and he just put it wide. Cole Yuli, who already has three goals this year. He had nine all last year. Soto goes in. He's going to draw penalties. He was hooked. Soto plays it back to Gaudet, and as Swenson touches the puck, here comes the penalty. It's a hook, and it's going to be the third power play for Campbell's. You know, Connor Honey, I agree with this, had a nice game for the Seattle Thunderbirds. Just skates by two defensemen, forces number 11, Dylan Willick, to come back on the back check. And if it wasn't for Willick, he may have had a better scoring chance than that. And then what a job by Kamloops to answer right back with that chance there by Cole Yuli. And then the penalty puts Kamloops on the power play. One for two with the man advantage. Bozon and Smith up front along with LaPon. Purpose and Ranford occupying the point positions right now. Here's Smith. Ranford now down low off that half wall. Tries to feed it back to Herbis. Does a good job Herbis does to keep the puck in. Now down low, here's Le Bozon. Lepon scores! J.C. Lepon from Tim Bozon. And it's 5-2, another power play goal for Kamloops. Again, the line combines beautifully. Puck back to the point. They're going to get it into Bozon right there, Herbert. Now, you don't get Tim Bozon too much room, and he's going to take that puck right to the net there. Finds the seam while the rest is history. When he takes that puck into that spot, and it squirts to that spot there, and you got a right-handed shot. J.C. LaPon coming in. He's going to bury that just about every time. The line's, again, been terrific. First goal for LaPon this year. He had 19 last season. 12.46 the time of the goal. It is power play. And it's their second as they go two for three so far in the man advantage. The assist number 15, Tim Bozon, and to number 19, Brendan Ranford. The time of the power play goal, 12.46. Ranford, the second assist, 12.46 the time. And there's going to be a penalty now to Kamloops as going to the box for interference is Macklin. Hey Stu, I don't know if you can hear us down there, bud, but uh, Shea Theodore not being a big factor in this third period, has it made a difference, you think, to this Seattle team? I uh, I would agree. I saw him just jump over the bench. Funny you should add that, uh, Bill. And he was just wincing the whole time. And we see him skating back there uh, again rather rather gingerly. So uh, we'll see how he moves the puck out here. Maybe get rid of it quick. But here's hoping. On the power play, I, I think the big thing, I'll finish this thought in a moment, Delnoff gets it across. Oh, good save there off Honey again as Shevelding went up, took it up high. Now Sheen with it. Sheen. Hard pass over to Honey. 
He collects it nicely. Tries to play it back towards Theodore, who gloves it down, winds up, fakes the shot. Theodore once more, moves in, passes it off. Here's Swenson, backhand, it's stopped by Chevelday. Honey can't, or can he? Yes, he can, only for a, well, more than a moment. Here's Swenson, Swenson. Back of the net. Swenson will head to the front of the goal. Here's Theodore once more, shot, save. Unable to get his stick on the rebound with Sheen, and it goes down the ice. I was going to say, I think the big thing for Theodore is when he takes the skate off after the game. That's going to be the... I'm sure the thing that judges whether or not he plays tomorrow against Everett. Dan, it's hard enough to play this game healthy. Never mind when you're hurt. Lockhart brings it in over the line. 20 seconds to go in this penalty. Five and a half to go in the third. Forsberg fans on the one-timer, and look who's away to the races. It's Ranford all alone. Ranford scores! Brendan Ranford, shorthanded, 6-2, Cam Loops. Jesse Forsberg, Right there, doesn't get much on that shot. Worse yet, he falls down after fanning on it. Well, that's all Brendan Radford needs, and you know, Glover gets a pretty good piece of this, but obviously not enough of it. Brendan Radford, happy to be back in Kamloops, no question about that, I'm sure. If you're gonna be a 20-year-old, you have to come back from the American Hockey League, be an effective one. Ranford's been there. He's got four points tonight, Bill. And maybe a little bit of a quiet four-point night if there's ever such a thing. A goal and three assists now. And that's unassisted after Forsberg messed up on the one-timer. And here comes Jankowski in over the line. They've scored four in a row. It was a 2-2 tie, believe it or not, in the second, third period here. And Campbell's has busted it open with four unanswered goals. They're going to win going away, it appears. Funny how hockey too cold. We thought, well, we might be in for a real good third period. Been good for one team. Yeah, you got to learn to win. This is something Steve Connor Waltrick's team's got, still have to do. Well, they haven't had much winning in the last three years, so it's a work in progress, to be sure. They're kids, they're young. And they will be there. The Bond shot, that goes wide. We sure saw some signs of it here tonight. Nice pass into the slot, and another goal. They score. And some of these goals are going in a little too easy on Glover. That's the seventh goal of the night. And if you would have said in the second period this is going to end up 7-2, to two, I'm not sure I would have believed it. Yeah, Herbis keeps that puck in at the, at the blue line. And then gets the puck right far side of your screen. There you go. He keeps it in. They get it deep. And Bozon, we talked about him finding those nice spots. That's just a weak job defensively on that situation. There's the keeping. Here comes the pass. Is there anybody that could have touched Bozon there? Now well, Colin Smith in the crease area in case there was a loose puck hanging around. But you talk about blowing it open. Wow. Season scored by number 15, Tim Bozon. The assist to number 34, J.C. LaPon, and to number 13, Merrick Urbis. The time of the goal, 16:02. And they've made a goaltending change after the goal went in, as uh, they have pulled Glover. Seven goals on 35 shots. Justin Miles comes in to mop up. He played midget in Calgary last year. Some might say, well, that's pretty late to pull him. But they do play again tomorrow. And the last couple of goals have not been good ones on Glover. You know, one of the reasons that you want to get a guy like Justin Miles in there right now as you see Glover on the bench, Dan, his last season, Miles, a 70-year-old, only played six games, 
in Calgary for the North Stars in midget. That was it. He missed the rest of his season because of an injury. So you want to get Justin Miles in as much as you can at this point of the season. It may be a perfect time to do so. And I mentioned the, the last couple. I mean, Ranford's was a breakaway, but it looked like he was going to stop that one. However, the game was out of reach already. And now with 2.45 to go in the third period. It's a matter of what it's going to end up being. And we'll see if the Camels will get a shot on the goaltender that's in there now, Justin Miles. Six foot two, 155 pounds, he's a 17 year old. Came in relief in game two, Portland at Seattle, and he started game three up at Prince George. Team they played well, but they didn't win. And then in the fourth team, they did win in overtime. This is their 15th of the year. So they're going to drop to 2 and 3 to start their season. Camelops is going to be 4 0 oh, 1. And Camelops so far has scored 22 goals and allowed 13. They may have. How many? They may have a couple guys this year on this Camelot's team with 100 plus points. Wouldn't be surprised. They're going to fill the net. If they stay healthy, I mean, look at tonight. They, they haven't even been a 60 minute team. Really, not bad. Good first 20, last 20 has been good. A little bit of a lull in the second period. As I say, you get a Ranford as a quiet, he's got four point night. I think that's going to happen quite often for this team. A five point nine, I should say. Four assists, and then he scored a goal on that breakaway shorthand, and now he's got rough stuff. One fifteen to go, and you got Elliot and Chinkowski squaring off. Elliot, six foot six. Chinkowski, six foot two. brief one and they're both being told to go to their room stand in the corner let's go back down to Stu Walters thanks a lot Dan was able to talk with Brendan Ranford uh, just in that second period intermission talking about the uh, free agent trial with the Hamilton Bulldogs of the AHL and he says you know what it was nothing but a positive experience we were talking about maybe slipping through the cracks there not being signed by Philadelphia or Hamilton here but he says uh, he's taking a lot from it, just coming back down here, and now he is even hungrier, and by no means is the door shut at the AHL or even the next level. So he's hungry, and he's looking forward to showcasing his skills, and he is doing that tonight at the WHL level. Well, he's like Cam Loops the last two years, scoring with a combined 178 points. He's the longest serving Blazer, 281 games. As of this night, he now has 276 points. He needs 62 more games this year to surpass C.J. Stretch's record of 341 career games in a Kamloops uniform. Dan, the key will be motivation, and I don't think that will be any problem for that young man over there. I think he feels very, very good about where he's at physically, the kind of shape that he's in. Um, and I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him lead this Camloops Blazer team in scoring three consecutive years in a row. Offsetting penalties not affecting who has the man advantage, but they do have four on four on the ice. I don't know if they're giving them two minute penalties or two and five. Well, it's interesting, Bill, you and I were opening night in Edmonton, standalone game, Edmonton Oil Kings. A lot of people like them to, I mean, it's only October, but people already at the beginning of the year, they, they do those predictions. And we saw Edmonton opening night, and now we see Camelot for what is our second game together. And a lot of people think Camelot's going to be the team that'll be there at the end. Maybe that's a collision course. Lots and lots and lots of water to go under this bridge, but these are two real good teams. Well, it'd be hard for me to find any team with more offense 
than the Blazers, and that's always going to catch you, get you down the WS, WHL road an awful long way. They struggled a bit, period two, defensively, and they were able to write that shift beautifully. Just announcing those penalties, and they were minors for roughing. Hickman goes in. Last time we saw Seattle on Shaw was last year in Calgary, and Hickman scored the game-winning goal against Glover, who's now his teammate. There's Smith going high. They haven't had a shot yet on this uh, new goalie, Miles. He's getting some minutes, but he hasn't faced anything yet. Purvis, now to J.C. LaPon. Purvis follows it up. Wolf now goes in over the blue line. Dance for Sheen going in on goal. Try to get it over to Delnoff. Now to the line. Shot blocked. This game comes to an end with Kamloops blowing it open in the third period. They score five times after Seattle tied it 2 2. That is called winning going away. Well, let's have a news flash, folks. If you're any fan of the Western Hockey League, and I'm sure you've been watching this game, I'm going to give you notice. There is no team, none in the WHL, that has a better top six forward group than this Kamloops Blazers. Ranford, DePap Willick, LaPont Smith, and Bozon. Seven goals tonight for the Blazers, all of them from those six players. They got a pretty solid defense, and they're pretty good in goal, too. But it's those top six that were the whole story for me in this game here tonight. And a little salute to the fans. Remember a year ago in the playoffs, or this past spring, they had the ultimate salute. They went to the dressing room, and they came back from the dressing room for a concert-like curtain call. They won't be doing that tonight, but they do salute their fans. They get two in the first period. They allowed Seattle to get back in the game and credit the T-Birds for doing just that. But then five goals on only nine shots in the final period to win this game by a score of 7-2. to two. We've got post-game reaction coming up. You're watching the WHL from Kamloops on Shaw. their Kamloops Blazers with a 7-2 victory over the Seattle Thunderbirds. Seattle came back and erased a 2-0 deficit, tied it early in the third period, but five unanswered goals for the Blazers gives them their fourth win in five games to start the season. Let's go down to Stu Walters, who has a guest. Stu. Thanks very much, Andy, and I am with the first star, uh, Blazers forward Brendan Ranford, and Brendan, uh, five points overall, four in the third period alone. Uh, how fun was this one to play in tonight? It was actually a lot of fun. I mean, we just stuck, stuck to our systems after they tied it up, and we just played hard, and we, all, we end up with a 7-2 win. We were happy with it. Coach Guicheron was telling me that he didn't really want you guys playing too much shinny. He thought you were doing that in the first four games of the year, wanted more structure, but looks like the shinny worked tonight. I wouldn't say we played too much shinny hockey. After it was 2-2, we just got back to how we played and just getting the pucks in deep, and I mean, we capitalized on our chances, and that's what how we can play hockey. We're going to take a look at your goal. If you can uh, slowly take us through what uh, what you saw there and your move there. Well, <laughs> the defenseman kind of fumbled the puck at the point and just just went in and uh, went through. And I didn't even know how it actually went in. And I I think I hit his arm and then kind of trickled in. But I mean, when you have a good night like this, you get lucky once in a while. Talk about the uh, your line. It's a, a, a rare luxury for Gishron to have uh, three 20-year-olds out there. He feels good about putting you guys out in any situation. He did say before the game that he needs you guys to, you know, start clicking. And I know it is still early, but all three of you having a great game tonight. How important is that? That's huge. I mean, your 20s win a lot of your games in this league, and having three on the same line, we can play in all sorts of different situations, and we play hard. And all of us want to win this year, and that's just how we can play. And talk about your experiences over the last uh, couple of weeks here. A lot of air miles. You were up. Uh, trying out with the Hamilton Bulldogs of the AHL. How was that experience? Are you discouraged or are you even hungrier now? I would say I'm even hungrier. It was tough. It was a tough situation going there. They had a lot of forward sign and stuff like that. But I mean, it was an awesome experience. I learned a lot of different things and this. It was overall just awesome. I mean, it was it was a great time and good people there and Marchadolin is a good place to be. All 
All right, you got three more at home. Uh, it's important to build some momentum, and uh, you have Medicine Hat tomorrow night. Yeah, we need, a, we need a big win tomorrow night too as well. So we're just ready to play. All right, thanks for this and a uh, great game tonight. Thank you very much. Let's head up to Andy Neal and WHL Central. Which is brought to you by Sierra Silk. Congrats to Brendan Ramford on that big five-point performance this evening. You heard Stu mention Medicine Hat is here tomorrow. Seattle goes back home, and they have a date with the Everett Silver Tips tomorrow night to try to get themselves back to 500 as well. Let's take a look at the Cal Tire three-star selections from this evening's game. As you heard from Brendan Ranford, the number one star, J.C. LaPon, the second star from the Blazers, and Dylan Willick had a couple of goals tonight as well. As the Blazers roll with seven tonight in a 7-2 romp over the Seattle Thunderbirds here on the WHL on Shaw. We're back with the out-of-town story when we return to campus. WHL Hockey is live on Shaw. Catch the NHL stars of tomorrow today. Don't miss the excitement when the Everett Silver Tips look to take a bite out of the Eastern Division with a stop in Swift Current to take on the Broncos. Tune in Wednesday, October 17th, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific for great junior hockey action. The Western Hockey League, building the world's finest talent. WHL Hockey. Well, nine games total in the Western Hockey League this evening. We'll start out east, where the Brandon Wheat Kings fall to the Portland Winterhawks. First road game for the Winterhawks on their East Division trip. Alex Schoenborn, the winning goal for the Winterhawks in their 2-1 decision. Swift Current Broncos got two from Adam Lowry and Levi Buse, and they hammered the Saskatoon Blades tonight. 10-1, just the second win of the season for the Broncos, but they do have points in all six of their games played thus far this season. Chandler Stevenson got the winner for the Regina Pats. Back and forth affair with the Red Deer Rebels tonight, but Regina pulls it out. A 3-2 win at home over the Rebels. Prince Albert, who else is taking notice of the Raiders? The top team right now in the WHL, winning in Edmonton last night, and they get the shootout win over Calgary this evening. Greg Chase, though, salvaged the point for the Hitmen with the tying goal with a minute to go in regulation time, but a 5-4 win for the Raiders this evening. Prince George Cougars, they get their fourth win in five as they double up the Kelowna Rockets in the first of two at the CN Center. Brock Hershey and Zach Pochero scoring twice for the Cougars in their 6-3 win. It's a 4-1 final in Kennewick, Washington now as the Tri-City Americans dump the Lethbridge Hurricanes by a 4-1 count. Connor Rankin with the winning goal for Tri-City. Meanwhile, Mitch Holmberg and Brendan Kitchton each scoring a pair. Kitchton's second of the night was a game winner in Spokane. Gets by the Victoria Royals by a 5-3 count. Victoria will be in Tri-City tomorrow night. And the Vancouver Giants see in the third period after a 7-0 loss to Kelowna on Wednesday. They're up on the Medicine Hat Tigers by a 4-1 score. Brett Kulak has right now the winning goal as it stands so far in a 4-1 lead. Five-point night for Brandon Ranford and the Kamloops Blazers to beat the Seattle Thunderbirds here at the Interior Saving Center by a 7-2 count for their fourth win of the season. Out shooting Seattle 35-24 to in the game. We're back to close things out here from the Interior Saving Center in Kamloops when we return to the WHL on Shaw. WHL Hockey is live on Shaw. Catch the NHL stars of tomorrow today. Don't miss the excitement when the Everett Silver Tips look to take a bite out of the Eastern Division with a stop in Swift Current to take on the Broncos. Tune in Wednesday, October 17th, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific for great junior hockey action. The Western Hockey League, building the world's finest talent. WHL Hockey, only on Shaw. Get off on the right foot here this evening. The Blazers do with a 7-2 victory, five unanswered goals in the third period. Our next action on the WHL on Shaw comes your way next Wednesday when the Medicine Hat Tigers entertain the Edmonton Oil Kings. It starts at 7 o'clock Pacific time. That is 8 o'clock Mountain as the Tigers and the Oil Kings go toe-to-toe -to -toe in Medicine Hat. Dylan Willett with a couple this evening. For Dan Russell, Bill Wilms, Stu Walters, and the rest of the WHL on Shaw crew, I'm Andy Neal. Thanks so much for watching this evening from Kamloops. We'll talk to you again Wednesday from Medicine Hat. Good night, everyone.